that we had um, the Memorial Day opening a microphone check. And then directly after that, we had the rally for reparations in D.C. And then right after that, I got to get back on the road. And now we're doing the film again. So, you know, um, I do want to do something at the museum in August. And I want to I've been wanting to do a big event where we get a lot of the um, scholar warriors to sit down and chop it up. So, you know, I'm, I'm kicking the idea around. FBA Stoic. Turn your microphone on, sir. Hey, what up, Tariq? Hey, brother, how are you? What's good? How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm, I'm doing. What's on your mind? Yo, I had a question. Since the um, shooter who shot Trump seems like he's a suspected white supremacist, you think it's a good time for Trump to try to pander more to the black vote without losing his white base? Yeah, they're not going to do it. See, the thing is, whenever the, there's like a little somewhat of civil war between the white supremacists, what they have to do is double down on focusing on us. They've always done that. Instead of kind of courting us, no, no, no. They got to let each other know, hey, look, we can't be fighting and shooting each other. We got to know who the real enemy is. It's the Negras. Just like after the Civil War. After the Civil War, you had people like Henry Grady, who went around the, the South and went around the country saying, hey, look, you know, the North and South, we were fighting, but we got one thing in common, white supremacy. These were his words. He was going around the country promoting white supremacy. Hey, come on now. We got to we, we we're fighting and we have the Civil War. But, you know, the enemy is these Negroes. And the irony is they got a big statue of Henry Grady down in Atlanta. You know, they got a statue of him down there in Atlanta and they got hospitals named after Grady. And people brag about being Grady babies. Grady baby was a Grady was a hardcore white supremacist. But I digress. All right, let's get real ace. Ace. All right. Everybody raise your hand if you're ready to get on. If you're ready to get on, raise your hand. For the people who are ready to get on, because a lot of people are changing the subject. We're trying to talk about one subject and people are bringing up other stuff. So if you're ready to get on, raise your hand. Let's get Roger. Then we'll get the Atavist. And then we'll get midnight. And let's make it real quick because we're trying to get everybody we can. What's going on, Tariq? How you doing, bro? I'm good, brother. What's going on, Raj? I'm good, man. Uh, just one quick question. So last night there was uh, a Somali guy that was on. He was talking about how he marks basically FBA on his applications or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And I was wondering how we as a as a community can stop that or like what can we do to like put a stop to that because he was dead serious like he okay he might have been laughing but that's something that we really need to like take a look at and do a deep dive into like uh what's some ideas that you think that we could do to kind of stop that or like put an end to that my thing is when it comes to when it comes to the reparations i'm down for doing dna checks i'm okay what somebody got hold on midnight is that you brother Midnight. Okay, yeah, midnight's over there washing clothes. Okay, I don't know what that noise was. But yeah, like I said, when it comes to getting the reparations, I'm down for people to do damn DNA test because our DNA goes here. We can, you know, even though there's it goes to Africa and Europe and all of that, it goes here too. It shows you where our lineage goes here on this land. So I'm all for that. Let's get the Atavis, please. What's up, brother? The Atavis. All right, let's get a real ace. Real ace in the building. It's my fucking... Real ace. All right, people with the the janky phones here. Let's get um Dr. Richard. Let's get Dr. Richard in the building. All right, come on, man. I'm not trying to deal with janky phones. Dr. Richard. How you doing, Tyreek? Good evening. 
I'm good, man. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Hey, I, I just wanted to say I am a fan of yours. Uh, you're doing great work. I, I just had, when I texted on on uh, on Twitter, I was just asking, have you considered Puerto Rican uh, in hip hop? But everything you're doing is great. You always have really good um, documentaries and stories. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm surprised that Joe Conzo is trying to block your film because I feel that artists should be able to express themselves. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's that. That ain't hip hop. Yeah. That ain't hip hop worth a damn. How are you supposed to be a hip hop pioneer? He's running around talking about he's a hip hop pioneer and you a damn Karen and lion and all of that stuff. Come on now. You know, people are showing what their, what their get down is. Let's be very clear. Let, let, let's look at the, the origin of hip hop. Hip hop, and I've been talking about this in interviews, hip hop has always been a counterculture. Hip hop has always been a counterculture. It was created because black people were denied access to things in the dominant society. And we knew we weren't going to get it. We knew we weren't going to get access to certain things. So we knew we had to create a counterculture. We knew we couldn't go to certain schools. We knew we couldn't go to certain music classes. We knew we couldn't get certain dance classes. So we had, out of necessity, to create a certain counterculture. We couldn't go to art classes. So we had to create a counterculture. The Latinos, they weren't really creating a counterculture because they were trying to be a part of the establishment. They've always been vying to be a part of the Anglo establishment or to be allowed into whiteness. They never refuted that. Even in the civil rights movement out here with the Latinos and on the West Coast and in the South, their civil rights movements were about them trying to gain acceptance as being white. You understand? Their whole argument was, hey, don't treat us like the Negroes. You know, we're white like you. So that's not a counterculture. That's them vying to be a part of the damn establishment, which is the antithesis of hip hop. Hip hop has always been anti-establishment. You, we knew we weren't going to be allowed into those spaces, so we created our own spaces. And as we see some of these um, people who try to latch on to the culture that we created, they turn into Karens at the end of the day. They turn into full-blown Karens, you see, which we don't have the option to be a Karen. You know, we don't, we don't do that, you see. So we got to see what the real deal is out here. I'm going to get a couple of more people in here because I, I do have to get up early in the morning out here. And shout out to Brother Marcel. Marcel, I heard that um, debate with you and Myron. Yeah, and Brother Marcel was cooking. And yeah, Myron started, he had to crash out. Yeah, when they can't refute anything, they start trying to crash out. Um, let's get um, let's get York in. Let's get um, Ace. I tried to get you on, Ace, and you didn't say nothing. And let me get um, let's get York and let's get Average Black. Uh, York. How you doing, brother? All right, I want to give a special shout out, man, to Brother Marcel, man. Look, I will put that brother on stage with, on a debate with anybody. Mm -hmm. That brother knows his government and political data. I'll put that brother on stage with anybody in a debate. I don't care who it is. Brother Black Alpha, man, I love your no-nonsense approach. Damn a white flag, we coming. I love that, brother. Yes, and Tariq, brother, brother Tariq, it goes without saying, man, the work you put in makes me very proud, brother. Keep doing what you're doing, I land. My man, I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. And shout out to Marcel and Brother Black Alpha and some of the other riders out here. Brother Average. What's up, Average? Unmute that microphone, Brother Average. Uh oh. Brother Average is having some difficulties there. All right, let's get some, um, let's get a couple of more people in here. Let's get Chill in here. Let's get Mo Trippin. 
All right, let's get Jude, somebody. All right, a lot of folks in here. All right, let's try chill. All right, let me give people like three seconds to hop on. Chill. All right, you are, oh, there he is. What, what, what's up, bro? What's up, chill? How are you? I'm all right, bro. Uh, I wasn't sure if you was hit to this uh, documentary on you. Hulu called Breaking on the One. I'm not sure if you heard of that. I heard about it. Did you see it yet? Oh, uh, yeah. I checked it out like a month ago. Um, it's pretty much about like a breakdancing uh, comp in, like in 81. But at the beginning of it, they kind of like have some, I would just say black faces talking about, you know, this and that, um, how black and brown, you know, but and then it breaks off into like the break dancing aspect. But I just thought that was kind of weird that they crowbarred in, you know, that talking point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all them documentaries do that now. And yeah, and if you don't crowbar that in, they start trying to sabotage your stuff, which is what Joe Conzo and others are doing now. They're doing straight up Karen stuff, and y'all should be ashamed. All y'all New Yorkers allowing these Karen dudes to be a part of the creation of hip hop, knowing that they're not and knowing that they act like damn Karens. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start getting on people's bumper for letting these dudes roll the way they roll. That should have been checked a long damn time ago. You, you see? That should have been checked a long damn time ago. Dudes out here being Karens trying to bury the truth and bury the voices of the people who pioneered this thing. You know, that's shameful that these people were allowed to fester like this and do these little dirty moves behind the scenes. Yeah. See, stuff like that should have been called down. And we let people like that try to undermine our cultures you know, we got to check that stuff. Average, what's up, brother? Hey, good evening, Tariq, man. Um, you know, I read the letter. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll post it in the Jumbotron real quick. I know you're going to close the room. Um, but um, Joe Conzo uh, is attempting to stop your, your ticket sales in New York, um, talking directly to the theater. And I know he's made the same claim with Amazon to get, down, uh, to get microphone check taken down. This is a, a supposed hip-hop documentarian who's down for the culture. But, you know, you have the most historically accurate film on hip hop, you know, period dot, because yep. as the legends, the creators live and breathe, you actually sat them down. Unlike any other film, you sat down, got everybody you could to speak on what they created. And this dude is undermining that. So we see we ain't got no allies. We don't have no friends in this. And then, like you spoke about before, the coastal cities. It's a lot of uh, Latino ran radio stations. They're not talking about this documentary. So they're participating in cultural erasure. It's, it's anti-blackness trying to get rid of this film. So yeah, we got to lean in and support it because um, nobody's checking these people. From the time that, that Fat Joe said what he said about Latinos in 50-50, there should have been a whole bunch of black American icons that checked them. They didn't say shit. And that's a problem. That's yes, a real problem. My man, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Man, listen, I, when I've been on this press run, and I've been doing a lot of mainstream press, I've been deliberately boosting the names of our pioneers in hip-hop, Shy Rock, Busy B, Hollywood, because they don't really get mainstream press like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't get mainstream press when it comes to mainstream press, they start talking about people from the 80s and 90s. They don't never acknowledge these folks. I make it a point every time I go to the media to mention these pioneers. So not only is their name and their images locked into the film historically, it's going to be locked into the media narrative because that's going to live on now. I've been uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution did an article about me the other day. I'm mentioning all of these pioneers. So now when you Google them, you Google their names, it's going to be all in mainstream print now. USA Today has an article about me coming out. I'm mentioning the names of these pioneers. You see? Giving them their flowers. Because a lot of the mainstream press ain't touching on them like that. 
And the fact that you got somebody who's supposed to be an ally trying to undermine that behind the scenes, that's shameful. There is no black and brown coalition with that. You understand? I, I don't play fantasy games. People show their true colors <clears throat> when it's time for black folks to get their props and people can't l leech on to the props, then they'll just blow up the spot. They try to go scorched earth. That's not a damn coalition. You see, anytime we do something, we got to latch everybody onto it. And if we don't latch everybody damn onto it, then it's a scorched earth thing. They'll just blow up the damn spot. That's why Tethers be so hostile when we start talking about reparations. Look at how hostile they are. We're not talking about doing anything to them, foreigners. We're not, we're not talking about doing anything to you. We're saying, hey, man, hey, brother, just, you know, we're going to be over here getting these reparations, man, because, you know, we got a debt that's old. Shut up, nigga. You niggas are divisive. You niggas hit me. Why do you niggas hit you? Huh? What? What? You niggas hit me. Same thing. When we talk about the real origins of hip hop, you know, hey, um, the real pioneers who were there, they were like, hey, we were just we were there on our own. There was nobody else around with us. Nobody was participating. We were doing this on our own. Oh, you guys are divisive. It's not divisive. Nobody was participating in the culture when it began. And if they can't colonize it, they're going to try to burn it down. Yeah, that's not a coalition. You see? The stuff Joe Conzo and the, the Derek Colognes, these guys are doing dirty ass, caring stuff. This is white supremacist stuff that they're doing. These tactics. You, you understand? If you got a if you can refute something, refute it. You counter it with your own film or whatever. You refute it, but doing this old Karen ass white supremacist stuff that people are playing their hands and you see what it is. Yeah. We, we all, we got, and, and I'm fine with that. We all the hell we got. And we got to understand the strength that we have. If we just stay codified, just stay on code with everything. All right, let's get a couple of more people in here. Again, I, I got to get up in early in the morning and hope my flights ain't janky. Mo Trippin, what's up, brother? Uh, hello, can I be heard? Yes, yes sir. How are you, uh, Mo? Well, sir, uh, thank you uh, for the nice broadcast and uh, congratulations on your, you know, media tour. I appreciate it. I yep. appreciate it, man. Uh, you actually give me mm -hmm. somebody that uh, my son can, you know, like a, a public figure. You know, we have men in our lives, but you know, somebody in the public that he can that I can point to and say that's somebody. You know, somebody that's breathing. Yes, um, that's very important mm -hmm. out here for our boys. Um, yes, and sir. as far as uh, Conzo and Mr. Cologne, man, um, they need to understand, man, that that we see snakes, man, as as a culture, man. We all have like a janky relative, and you know, with that shifty eye and that attitude, man. Like you can't, then they mad they can't finesse us. That's that's a shame. Right. Man. Like you can't do it, bro. And be happy that people know your name. If it wasn't for hip hop, you would be a conga drum player or something. You know what I'm saying? Like chill out, man. Just. Yeah. Get the money you're getting. That's two. Well, my man, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, boy, these weird-ass tactics, that ain't got a damn thing to do with no hip-hop. That These little weird tactics that they're doing, these behind-the-scenes saboteur tactics, that's proven the point of everybody, that y'all weren't really down anyway. You guys are acting like them people. That's the that's proving the point that everybody's making. Doing that little weird ass stuff. We don't be we don't do that. Nobody's doing that to Fat Joe. Nobody's calling up venues saying, "Oh, Fat Joe had did it." Fat Joe. Nobody's doing that. People are countering his narrative with the proper narrative. People are hitting the Fat Joes off with truth. You ain't got to call record stores and you ain't got to do all that weird stuff. No, you just say, hey, no, no, what you're saying is not the truth. Here is the truth. Yeah. And when you can't counter with the truth, then you got to do Karen stuff. Jude, hop on. Mr. Jude, you ready? All right. Come on, brother. 
Hello? Hey, there you go. What's up, Jude? Hey, how's it going, Brother Tariq? How are you? I'm good, man. What's on your mind, sir? Hey, man, I've been following you for a while, brother. I can appreciate everything you're saying, man. I hey, love it. Hey, maybe you can appreciate this, man. Um, You put me on the Bobby Hemmett. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I listened to some of his lectures, and uh, I, I remember one thing he said. He said whenever he got into doing lecturing for the people, he had to ask himself, am I doing it for self-aggrandizement or I'm doing it to make money? So what I'm trying to say is when you when you go out and do your lectures or you putting your message out, I, I don't see a problem with you doing it for, for money because mm -hmm. a lot of our leaders or people who had a voice in the conscious you know, uh, community, they died broke. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do, man, which is very unfortunate, man, because there's a lot of those scholar warriors, man. Dr. That ben, I, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I had to help pay some of these folks' bills, man. A lot of folks don't know that, you know, so that was very unfortunate. But, yeah, man, it, it's all right to, to, to make a living doing what you do. Let's get my New York brother, Brother Khalif, in the building. This my New York brother. Hey, what's going on, Tariq? How you doing, brother? Good, man. How you doing, sir? All right. Peace, love, and reparations to the family. So, listen, man. Like, this dude, Joe Conzo, right? First of all, there was no such thing as a hip-hop photographer. That's number one, all right? You know, like, they, he didn't come along until the movie Wild Style came out. And that came out in the 80s, right? So, yeah. you know, he, he, he photographed all the guys that was in the movie and stuff. And he started photographing all these guys, Kaz and them, the Cold Crush Brothers, Fantastic Romantic. So, you know, he hasn't been there, like, from the beginning. So I don't even understand what his real claim in the whole hip-hop culture is really about. Because there's no such thing as a hip-hop photographer. And not only that, prior to him, there were guys who were taking pictures. There's not a lot, but there were guys who were taking pictures. So he, you know, he calls himself a pioneer in hip hop culture and all this stuff because he's a photographer. Like, I mean, there's really no claim there. You know, yeah. it's just more or less jealousy. It's just jealousy. They mad because the truth is coming out. You know, they tried to sit there and take something that didn't belong to them. They're trying to claim something that that that's just not theirs. You know. Yeah. And they just mad because they're not able to do it. The truth is coming out. When you made microphone check, that just pretty much sealed the deal. And that's just bothering the shit out of them. You know, I mean, I don't mean to curse, but no. it's bothering them. You know what I mean? And they just can't take it. You know, him and uh, Dr. Cologne, I mean, it's just, just accept the fact that, listen, y'all were not a part of this in the beginning. Y'all had nothing to do with the creation of this. I don't even understand what's so hard for them to understand about that, you know? They just want to latch on to everything that we got. Just doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. I'm going to land my plane with that, though. Man, thank you so much, brother. All, All right. right. All right, brother. But let me let me get it. I got to get to bed. But, yeah, I just wanted to tap in with the family. But, look, go to microphonecheck.com. Check what city it's in. See if it's in your city. Check with the film. Um, go see it this weekend. If you're in LA, tomorrow is the last day to see it. Tomorrow is the last day. So go see it in LA tomorrow. That's the last day to see it. And all the other... Yeah, no, I'm, we're doing interviews with like major publications. I just did an interview with um, USA Today today. It is. So we're doing all of this press, all of this publicity, and your, your boy Joe Conzo was damn hater. Yeah. That's that black brown coalition doing what it's doing. That's why I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked at all. Let's get snub nose. Now, snub nose, why you got a picture of the, this baby in there, man? Why you got Krishan Rock's baby as your profile picture, man? What's up, snub nose? Hey, what's up, Trey? Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. What's going on? Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, um, when you create the uh, microphone check West Coast edition, do you think you're gonna have any backlash from Mexicans? Since no, because they, no, because out here they 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 know not to go that way with it. It's different at in, in L.A. I'm, I'm saying out here, but I'm in New York now. Um, that Joe Conzo, Derek Cologne shit don't play out there like that. No, 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 no. That no, they're not gonna they're not gonna be on that at all because the brothers in la they they not gonna have that you know these guys are not gonna be walking around 
with all of that. We created it 50-50 nonsense. So, yeah, that would get checked very, very early. Because, look, they're trying. Again, I posted a, a, a retweeted a video of uh, an Asian girl had on a blue Pendleton. And she was in front of a lowrider that was bouncing up and down. And she was crip walking. And the caption was like, yeah, um, um, what is what was it? Chicano culture reaches Japan. Like Chicano culture? The hell? Blue Pendleton and Crip walking is Chicano culture? The hell it is. So again, there's all they're, they're already trying to test the waters and um, doing that same thing on the West Coast. They're, they're testing it. They're not going full fat Joe, like, hey, we did it 50-50, and all that, and they ain't go, they ain't doing that. They know they're going to get pushed back. So they're trying to push that line. Very interesting dynamic. All right, let's get a couple of more folks. Where are the ladies at? Let me talk to more of the women. I like talking to the ladies. Where are the ladies? And I mean ladies, ladies, not T.S. Giselle. Um, where are the ladies? Let's get conscious. You got a picture of me in here. Shout out to this sister. Are we at the museum in this picture? Look like we at the Hidden History Museum in this picture. What's up, Conscious Widow? What's up, dear? Turn the microphone on, beloved. Oh, yeah, we are at the museum. I can tell. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How are you, beloved? I'm good. How are you? You see my picture in the um in the thing? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that picture with you, too. You do? Oh, okay. Good, good, good. So I got a question. I just came on. I came in a little bit late, and I heard you saying something about I know God, Joe Conzo and all them been hating. So I came in a little bit late. Is it not showing in Philly anymore? No, it's not. It's not. Um, Joe Conzo threw a wrench in the game and they took it out of all the theaters around the country because of punk ass Joe Conzo sending that letter, knowing that um, the, the images and everything is under fair use. And he know it wasn't no copyright. He was just being on some hater ass level. So yeah, it's not even in Philly no more. Um, it was they cause he just sent the letter to the New York theater, but you know, once it got up to corporate, they were like, ah, we can't, you know, we don't know what this guy's about. We don't know. And it's too late. And Tariq can't edit the film in time. So, you know, it spooked him. And, you know, that's what they wanted. That's what Conzo and those dudes wanted. So, Wow, that's out of pocket. That's that black and brown coalition. Well, Real talk. You, you Real talk. Now, yeah, that, what, what part of hip hop is that? That right there is proof that y'all ain't got nothing to do with no damn creation of hip hop. What the hell part of hip hop is that? That's hip cop. That's cop shit. That's Karen stuff. Yeah, that ain't good. That's anti hip hop. Yeah. Real talk. All right. Let's get a couple of people in here because we do have a lot. And I see you down there, Nikki. Everybody say what's up to my sister Nikki, the god in the building. Aki, are you in Texas, dear? Are you still in Texas or are you in Atlanta? Uh, let me talk to my sister Aki real quick because I know I just want to make sure you were all right because I know there was some stuff going on in Houston and I wasn't sure if you were still in Texas. Um, I just wanted to make sure you're safe and you're good. You know, let me know if I need to send you a bag of noodles or something. <laughs> if I need to, you know. Hey, beloved. Um, I'm in Texas. We're still <laughs> toughing it out down here. Um, are your people still some of their electricity out? What's going on? Yes. There are still areas that are struggling to get power back on. Okay. I'm sure you can guess a little bit about the demographics of those areas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Whereas other spots that I'm hearing, like River Oaks, never lost power to begin with. So wow. they have a special grid, apparently. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're safe out there, right? Oh, yeah, I'm good. I, I already got my stuff cleaned up. Just lost a fence and a tree. That's it. Okay, good, good. Okay, beloved, I just wanted to check in on you, dear. Okay, thank you for checking in. All right, uh, bye. Aki, the lovely Aki, Aki, what? movie was Aki in? I think Aki was in American Maroon. 
I made Aki get in the movie. I'm like, Aki, you are too fly and articulate to not be up here spitting that hot fire. All right, let's, um, okay, yes, okay, Devin, Dusty Devin in the building, okay. Okay, do y'all want to hear, from, if y'all want to hear from Dusty Devin, um, the peppercorn hair having tether, everybody give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. If y'all want to hear from Dusty Devin, family, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Family, oh God. Everybody, let me look down here. Everybody, <laughs> everybody like, boo. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear from Dusty Devin? <laughs> What's your, they don't want to hear from you, Devin. Everybody's giving the thumbs down. <laughs> uh, we got one thumbs up. Everybody's, Sir Major's giving the thumbs down. Roger, thumbs down. Don't nobody want to hear from Dusty Devin. <laughs> They were like, no, they don't want to hear from, hold on, just, okay. <laughs> Dusty Devin, it's unanimous. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want to hear Musty talk. They do not want to hear Musty hater. They just don't want to hear it, Devin. I mean, he's bound with, hold on, let me, okay, let's just, just, Devin, what do you got to say to the people? The people, they, they, they don't want to hear you, Devin. What, how do you feel about that? Everybody's giving you the thumbs down, Devin. How do you feel about the FBA family giving you the thumbs down? Hop in, Devin. Devin, put your ashy emoji thumb down and, and unmute your microphone. He's the only person who has an ashy emoji. All right, Devin. Devin is still trying to get it together. All right, let me see. While, while Devin is over there struggling with his um, Instacart phone. Hold on one second. Let's get, um, let's get Indigo. Indigo in the building. What's up, Indigo? All right, Indigo ain't saying nothing. All right, let's get... Um, the Earth Angel. The Earth Angel. And then we'll get Brother Marcel in the building. Uh, well, let's get Marcel in here. Brother Marcel, let's get Marcel on first. I'm good, brother. How are you, Brother Marcel? I'm good. I just have a one question. It really, really infuriates me what that tether is doing. Yeah. And I just want to know, does this sabotage your film's chance of getting an Oscar nomination. Yeah. It, it, yeah, thank you, brother. It actually did because we needed a full week of a, of a theatrical run and the film needed to play three times a day and the theater out here was set up for that. And I think, to be honest, I think that's why they did it. I think that's why Conzo did it. Um, and many people believe that he was working in cahoots with Cologne and I think they did it to specifically sabotage our chance of getting an Oscar nomination because there has been a lot of Oscar buzz around the film. And these folks, they've been trying to sabotage it from day one, to be honest. They've been trying to sabotage it from day one. So again, to me, this just reassures what we've always said about that Black-Brown coalition, which is what we talk about in the film, to be honest, you know, they just proved everything that we said ain't no damn coalition. If they can't leech off of us, they'll go scorched earth. You understand? That's what it is. The earth angel hop on. Hey, Tari. What's up earth angel. How are you? Good. What city, um, what city, I just wanted what, to... what city are you in earth angel? I'm in uh I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, cool. All right. So what's on your mind, dear? I just wanted to give you some words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, I'm um this exposes our experience in this country, um, especially uh how we get sabotaged, how people think that they could just leech off of us, steal from us. Um 
Yeah. And so this should be the end of that black and brown Real shit. Real talk. I don't want to yeah. never ever hear that black and brown shit. And they've been saying imitation is a form of flattery. No, it's not. Yeah. It's a form of fucking erasure. Yes, it is. And that's My it. My man. Thank you. All so right. much beloved. Yeah. Um, I'm so do y'all don't understand. I, I feel what this is to feel. Nobody, I've been not hear nothing about no black Brown coalition. These people, they, they, this little stunt conjo and those, they, they didn't mark the line in the sand. And I'm telling you some of these New York cats, they feel a certain way about that. Some of these old school cats, they don't like that either. You know, that, that was a real dirt bag move. It ain't, that wasn't about no infringement. Again, dude, there was two images in the film that dude had, and we made sure we tried our best to not have any of his joints in. And there were a couple of unattributed images that slipped under the cracks, and he could have easily hit me up, and we would have taken it out. But no, the name of the game was to sabotage our joint, and that's what they did, you know. And that was the intent from from the beginning, and, you know, that looks funny style. But yeah, yeah, we used to it. You know, shit happens. Dr. Sintu. Dr. Sintu, hop in. Dr. Sintu, where you at, man? Unmute your microphone, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's me. Uh, you call me out? Yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? How are you? Hey, Ty. How you doing, man? I'm good, Sintu. Now, where you from, brother? Uh, Ethiopia. There you go. So what's, what's on your mind, Sintu? Uh... What's on my mind is the Fanos, the Freedom Fighters. Okay. Yeah, we're fighting. Uh, a uh, the state has been captured by a terrorist. Oh, really? Over there in your homeland? Yes, sir. Um, it's always some kind of war going on over there. It was. Yeah, too- actually, uh, Turk, I know you know this, but uh, you know Ethiopia is the last. Uh, the last strong black nation on this earth, and uh, basically, uh, you know, Linda Thompson, mm-hmm. the UN ambassador. She, yeah, they, they, everybody tried to destroy that country because, you know, they, uh, King Menelik, you know, were never colonized by the colonizers, and uh, right now, in the Mar region, there's uh, actually genocide going on, as yeah. you know. And the freedom yeah. fighters are fighting the uh, Oromo government. Okay, and I hope they get together, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hate, you know, I hate to see any type of conflict, you know, go on. And there's a genocide. You know, there's always conflict over there. Right. People meddling with the internal affairs. So I hope everybody pulls through. Now, where, where are you now? Are you in Canada or the U.S.? Because usually y'all be in Canada. No, actually, I'm in the uh, second largest city in a place called Bahada. It's outside of the capital city. Oh, okay, so you're you're in Ethiopia now. I am. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, we just got back the uh, the uh, phone line, cell phone uh, tower, but it was out for a year. Oh, damn. Yeah, just two weeks ago, uh, they uh, I think it had pressure on it, so they kind of let us use it now. So. Oh my man! I mean, and I you. support you, Tyreek. I support I support your work, and uh, I'm a fan. My man, I appreciate you, brother. Damn, Thank you. Say, you know this, man, the, the brothers and sisters who are actually living over there, many of them are actually cool. I want y'all to notice that. Notice people, when they when they call from the countries they're from, usually they're pretty cool. Yeah? Usually they, the, the disposition is pretty cool when they're in their homeland. It's the ones that get over here who be talking stupid as hell. Yeah? It's the ones who get over here who who talks dumb as hell. Yeah. But yeah, the ones over there, you know, they're they're riders. And again, like I said, I've traveled to these countries and you know, I've been to Zimbabwe. The people over there, the beauty, they treated me wonderfully. They treated me absolutely wonderfully over there. I have no problem with them. Uh, when I was in South Africa, they were treated me wonderfully. The the only people who had a problem with me were people who had left South Africa because they were upset with me because I was filming. Everywhere I went in South Africa, and there's a lot of shanty towns and townships over there that were kind of dilapidated. And they didn't want me filming. They're like, why are you showing us like this, nigga? I'm like, shit, this is how people are living. I'm looking for the, the wealthy areas. 
where all the black folks are bawling out. I was looking for them, couldn't find them. And that's no disrespect. But yeah, the ones who weren't there, they're, they have a, they feel a certain way about the image of their homeland, you know? Real interesting dynamic. I, just, I mean, we got a lot of people in here, but listen, family, listen, microphone check. Boy, this movie is so controversial, man. We could do a documentary about all of the stuff happening surrounding microphone check. It's always some damn controversy with this damn film, man. You don't have that much controversy around a film unless the film is hitting on some damn truth. You just don't have... We're hitting on something. We've we got to go through all this. Um, the praises and the sabotage. The you, you know the movie's hitting on something. And for those who've seen it, you, you, know, you know how wonderful the film is. It's a wonderful film. Get the Blu-ray at... F, no, at um, microphonecheck.com. We're going to have it streaming once we do a couple of edits. We're going to edit those pictures out and we're going to have it on um, FBA stream possibly by next week. Um, Devin, hop in, man. Dusty Devin. Devin, what's on your mind, man? Right, Devin? Okay, finally. Listen. Okay. First of all, why why do you why do you hate me? Not you, but people here. They hate me. Okay, people. Why do y'all hate Devin? Why be, you know, people? Um, you think people hate you? Why do you think they hate you? I don't think they hate you. I think I saw, I saw I saw I saw the uh, said major. This guy's uh this guy's an Ojibo. This guy's an uh, he's a what? A, a Ojibo. He's he's not an FBA. He's not a black man. This guy's uh this guy's a he's a, a con man. Listen, listen. I want to say a couple I of things. Got to let Sir Major uh, and have you just say something. No, no, no. I got to let, let. I got to let him on too. Listen, say something. Sir Major, you, you, you are an Ojibo, and you, you try, you, you say Nikki the God, the uh, fuck uh, some, some, some guy. Yeah, what, I, what I don't say? eat monkey meat or bush meat, so I, I couldn't speak to me, that. Me, this, this, listen, listen to this. I can, I cannot listen to a white supremacist talk to me like this. Come on, man. Hi, <laughs> boy. Listen, take it, take him away. Take him away. Listen, I want to talk to you about uh, Ethiopia. L this guy is a fraud, okay? This guy is a fraud. Uh, I, I, no, Hush Puppy is the fraud. Listen, Hush Puppy listen. Got you... arrested in Dubai from running a running a play on the United States government. Uh, look at this guy. He trying to uh, he tried to deflect. He he do not he do not want to talk about the. Uh, you guys are much. highest in maternity fraud. Academic Listen, fraud, we, insurance fraud, financial no, fraud. No, we we, we, we are the highest sir, we are the highest are the highest the earners fraud. in America. The highest earners in America. Okay. Okay. Now now, now that you heard this, and I have the I have the but, statistics but there, to, it, I have the statistics hey, to Devin, prove that. Here's, okay? the, here's the reality. The re the reality is this. You all don't have any reality to blame you are an but yourself. You See, are we an got an the Oyibo. white men to blame. Y'all got nothing but Africans to blame over there. Africa is supposed to be this beautiful continent. Well, all, with all Listen, these riches, we have our country. You guys we have our country. You do not have a country. For 40 cents a day, you can you feed your entire country. village. You, 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 you do not have a country. 35 cents a day, you feed your entire country. You you, you are a slave. You are a nakata. Thanking black Americans. We we, no, we thank you for what? It, you know about Ethiopia? This guy, this guy before he was from Ethiopia. Shout out to Menata Zuka. He's my he's my friend. Uh, Listen, Ethiopia has never been colonized. Never. Sir, Ethiopia is a third world country. And when Donald you, Trump you do, you do not know what you are. You, you have not been to Addis Ababa. About yourself, have you been to Addis? No, I, I, I have no reason. Then, then how can how can you say it's sir? A, a I don't need country? I don't need to be there to know that you come from a shit. I'm, I'm sorry, you come from a um, a bad place. <laughs> listen, listen. But three, you, you do not. You do not. So I'll wait. Okay, you, take, 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 take this or you go out. Got to get Dusty Devin out. But go ahead, sir, Major. Okay, so about Joe, man, that call was quite interesting. And it was actually a two-piece call, so we're going to have to put that together and post it tomorrow for transparency. But on that call today, he said that FBA were making threats to his wife. When asked what was those threats, he says there was threats to give him a give his wife an FBA tune-up. So I, I said, what is an FBA tune-up? He said he didn't know. The other thing is I got him to admit that he actually saw the film in its entirety. He purchased the copy, Blu-ray DVD. Yeah. So he actually 
Uh, I said, so wow, so you supported Tariq Nasheed. He says, well, I wouldn't call it supporting. The other thing that we, we talked about on that call was he did not necessarily rule out or he didn't necessarily agree with the 50-50 split with the uh, pioneering of hip hop. Okay. So mm -hmm. we kind of got him to, to make a little ground with that. He did not really double down on Fat Joe's statement. Uh, the other thing is that we found really interesting in that cease and desist was there was a lot of buzzwords, okay? So he talked about being a minority, a right. man of color, right? I, I said a man of color? Damn, that, that's our shit. He tried to pull a us on us, right? Yeah. So then he talked about having an activist mother uh, from the Bronx. So he played on the cultural identities of Black Americans to try to get you canceled, right? Yeah. He pulled the NAACP on us. And so we're gonna we're gonna uh, the FBA death row family we're gonna be responding uh, responding fearlessly on tomorrow. And then one other thing that uh, we found interesting is that um, he this is the same guy before the documentary got released. This is the same guy that if you remember the Rock the Bells article, he got Rock the Bells to retract their statement or take the article down. All right. Yeah. Yep. So this mm -hmm. is prior to the documentary even being released, prior to the uh, the trailer being released. This guy has already shown his his disposition about uh, Tariq and FBA. So and he, he he again in the in the call, he was doing a lot of pocket tapping. He was he was checking your pockets, uh, talking about your finances, talking about personal things. Yeah. And then when we did, when, when I did the follow up call and said, hey, bingo, you got it done. Uh, you got the show canceled. <clears throat> he tried to play the higher role, like, "Oh, well, I didn't do that." Tariq got it canceled. So, oh no, oh, please. Yeah, no, no. He, he said that you were responsible for getting it canceled. We also, I don't know if you got part of the uh, got the information that we also called respectfully. We called Quad Cinema, and they basically, you know, st stated what you said again is that it's not necessarily canceled, but they have to do all the logistical things, run it past legal and things of that nature. So uh, we got you back, man. We're still, we're still fighting. Uh, and I just wanted to give you that transparency. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to quad and um, uh, landmark because quad is a part of the landmark and, they, and they're very cool. They've been very cooperative and I, and I get where they're coming from. You know, they're, they're very good people. They're very professional and you know, they, they don't know that this, this hater, you know, they don't realize because they've never seen this before, but there's never been a project like this before. You understand when you have um, something this innovative and something this creative and popping that's coming from the grassroots, especially the black grassroots, a lot of people can't fathom how we get hated on and how vicious the damn hate and sabotage is, you know, so you know, we're used to it. We're used to it. All right. Uh, but everybody, you need to go to microphonecheck.com. Get the Blu-ray. Microphonecheck.com. You can get the Blu-ray. We're going to still keep pushing. I really hate, the only thing that really, you know, chaps my ass is just the, the Oscar um, qualifications. You know, that got, you know, because of Conzo, that got tanked. The Oscar qualification, because this thing, this was going to win an Oscar nomination. It's such a great film. And, you know, the hate is real out there. Oh, the hate is real. But, um, you know, we're going to revise. Shout out. What's up, Brooke? See my sister Brooke and I didn't see you earlier. What's up, Brooke? But yeah, we're going to revise and take those little two five second things out. It's only like a couple of seconds of the, the BS in there. So that's going, that's being changed as we speak. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. Look, go get your deodorant, rootworkstyle.com. Get that rootwork deodorant, rootworkstyle.com, and go get the film, man. Microphonecheck.com, microphonecheck. Policing Act that they never passed. They've been talking about that for four years. They never passed it. <clears throat> you understand? But, boy, that Stop Asian Hate stuff, boy, they, they pass stuff at the drop of a hat. And, again, that George Floyd policing, it, it, the language needs to be more specific. And they just need to revamp it and do something else, to be honest. We just need an anti-black hate crime bill. Yeah? We need an anti-black hate crime bill. That's what we need. 
and they're not prosecuting anybody. See, this is why we got to be very careful about who we support. Because here's the thing. On a, <clears throat> excuse me. That whole police department needs to be investigated. That whole police department needs to be investigated. This is not a one-off. For them to do a murder like that, that whole police department in Springfield, Illinois, it needs to be dismantled, investigated, the whole nine. But let me this is this is the bigger picture. We see how all of these people get on cold with each other. For them to offer sister the way they did, um, that means we, as a 43 million deep black community, we got to get on code. We have to start acting as law enforcement. You understand? That's what it's going to have to be. We got to be law enforcement. We have to uphold the law. We have to start saying you're not going to sit here and execute and lynch people and then the people who are supposed to protect us and produce justice, you're sitting here protecting race soldiers and murderers. We're gonna to have to have we're going to have to act as a form of law enforcement. Let's be real. With these vile white supremacists that's running amok that has infiltrated law enforcement <clears throat> that pull off these cowardly executions on innocent black men, black women, and black children. The reality is the only people who's going to stop that are black men. Black men is going to have to stop that. Malcolm X said that years ago to stop all of these um, police lynchings and um, race soldier lynchings. The only people who's going to stop that are black men, particularly foundational black American men. The black American descendants of freedmen. We're the only ones who's going to stop that. That's, that's the long and short of it. Because it's us who are the main targets, our families and our children who are the main targets. We are the protectors of these people. The white community is not going to stop it. As you see, many of them, they damn near justify the sister getting off like that. And they're very quiet about it. They get on code and they just shut the hell up and get real quiet about it. The dominant white society, they're not making no noise about that. They're not making no noise about that vile execution, shooting an innocent black woman in her home like that for nothing. You know, the way they did it was scandalous. None of these women groups, not, notice that. None of these white women's groups talking about women's rights, because I want y'all to understand, white women, they put race before gender. You get some of these bedwinches out here trying to put gender before race, thinking, well, I'm a woman first. No, the white women don't look at that. They look at race first. They're white women. They're not women who are white. No, no, no. They are white women, white first. Just like the, the, the feminist movement, the first wave, their whole argument, those white feminists, they were like, hey, wait a minute. Don't give these Negroes the right to vote before us now. Come on, white man, you can get you some act right. Are you a punk? They were punking white men out. That's what that whole early feminist movement was about. These white so-called feminists were just white supremacists. They were punking out the white man. Hey, how y'all going to let these Negroes make you give them the vote? I thought you were a proud white man. Come on now. They were on that. They've always been white supremacists, always. Huh? They put race first. So we got to understand what position we're in and we're going to have to produce justice. It stops when we say it's going to stop. Yeah, you dig? It stops when we say enough is a damn enough. When we say, hey, this ain't going to cut it, that's when it stops. Yeah, that's why we got to be codified. And that's why we're monitored all the time. They always monitor black men, especially black American men, because they understand where the power and the potential power is. They know the potential power that we have. 
And they know once we get fed up with stuff, things will turn around. So they always have to monitor and suppress everything we do and infiltrate us all the time. Because they know when we get on code, things going to get different. Okay? But this sister getting off the way she got off, that's not anything we need to take lightly, especially as black men. You got to be very clear because you can tell the strength of a community by the way the women are treated. Yeah. When they can treat your women and children any kind of way, that's a major sign of weakness. And there's no get back. Let's look. look. In the 1960s, let's be very clear. The 60s, see, you, you had a, a, sacrific a sacrificial generation. We got to give it up to a lot of the brothers and sisters in the 60s who did a lot of sacrificing for a lot of freedoms that we enjoy. Sometimes you get a generation of people who sacrifice for the next generation. We had that majorly in the 1960s. A lot of brothers were putting in work. Some of them brothers got killed. Some of them brothers are still in jail for putting in work, saying, hey, the next generation, we're going to make sure they're good. We're going to step to these white supremacists and make them stop harming us. Places like Cairo, Illinois, they ran all the white supremacists up out of there by force. In the 60s, man, these brothers were hijacking planes and going to Cuba, Algeria, all of these places. Um, you had these folks hitting up police stations. They were, they were putting in a lot of work. A lot of the riots that happened in the 60s, including the Watts riots and others, you know, why they got started, they got started because the word was some black woman got harmed. That's what the, the Watts riot, the rumor was, some brother's mom, the police roughed some dude's mother up, and the hood said, oh, no, no, no. That's not going to fly. Back then, there was a shame if you allowed somebody to harm a woman in your community. There was shame to that. They don't give a damn who it was, race, soldier, anybody. You harm a woman, that's a problem. So you got to do some get back. Because the women in the community, will, they'll look at you funny, like, damn, y'all letting these cats come in and harm us and ain't nobody doing nothing? So cats have to step up. But in the 60s in Philadelphia, I think, there was another situation where a rumor was a pregnant black woman got harmed by some race soldiers. Brothers started getting on the roof, sniping. People were putting in work in the 60s. And if you harmed your sister, it was a problem. Going uh, in Texas, there was a big race riot in Texas, early 1900s. The rumor was some, some white dudes harmed a sister. So some military brothers got them gats and just went around the neighborhood, popping at them white supremacists, popping on them. Like, oh, no, we not. No, 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 no. We can't just sit up and let black women get harmed and we not do nothing. We're not going, no, 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 no got to handle that. Yeah. So we got to understand that the problem won't get fixed until black men fix it. That's a black men thing. Black men are going to have to be on that. And speaking of black men, I see a lot of shaming tactics towards black men with Kamala Harris. A lot of these Democratic shields are running around here talking about um, black men are trying to undermine Kamala Harris. How dare you try to undermine another black woman? Well, Isaac Hayes Jr. He put up a tweet. Let me let me read his tweet. That's the son of legendary Isaac Hayes. So Isaac Hayes Jr. is out here doing the Democratic shill thing. But let me read his tweet directly about Kamala Harris and black men. Let me read his tweet word for word. Y'all bear with me one second. Let me, because I don't want to misquote it. The actual tweet is very interesting. What's the tweet? Where is it? Where is it? He said, or here it is. Black women, FYI to black men, black women are watching you try and tear down an overqualified black woman 
but trying to fulfill her purpose, break barriers, and accomplish her dreams. Your mothers, grandmothers, sisters, wives, and daughters would be ashamed of seeing you act like this. You look small, insecure, and weak doing so. Negro, please. First of all, my mama, grandmother, sister, wife, daughters, none of them made tandoori chicken. All right? None of them made curry. None of them made curry and chickpeas. They ain't got nothing to do with black women, foundational black American culture. We don't have to show Kamala Harris the same reverence we show our foundational black American women. The hell is wrong with y'all? Y'all not about to sit around here and portray Kamala Harris as the uh, the epitome of black womanhood. That's not a black woman. That's an East Indian woman. And her dad is Jamaican, and they keep trying to say Afro-Jamaican. I don't know what kind of Jamaican he is. He's from that Coley class. What kind of Jamaican is he? I don't... What. what when did, um, I don't see anything about him identifying as black. They're definitely not foundational black Americans. We don't have to sit up here and parade her around like she's a part of our lineage. She's not. You're not going to shame us into that. That woman, she's an Indian. That's why they keep trying to, every time she does something constructive, they specify, well, she's Asian slash Indian. See, right there, it disqualifies you from being a black woman, but black women and black people, we don't get to pick and choose what race we're going to be each day. See, that's the thing. We got to deal with being black and the ramifications that come with it. You can't go hide and be Asian somewhere. You know, no, that's a part of our culture. You got to deal with it. You got to stand 10 toes down on it. You ain't got no sanctuary. You don't have a, a racial sanctuary that you can slither to. You can't go put a dot on your head and, and bowl it and put some baklava in the oven. And No, you can't do all that and be something else and go hide off in another community. No, we got to deal with anti-black racism with no sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 I told y'all they were going to try the whole Kamala sister girl, black girl magic. Get the hell out of here. And shout out to the black women. A lot of black women are making videos like, hey, I'm a black woman and I do not support Kamala Harris. You don't owe her anything. What the hell do we owe Kamala Harris? This woman told us in our face that she ain't going to do nothing just for black people. I'm not going to do nothing that's only going to benefit black people. No. But she damn sure did something that only benefited Asians. She damn sure did something that only benefited Jewish people. She did stuff that only benefited the LGBT. The white ones, by the way. You see? And y'all trying to talk like we owe her something? Where, do we have any Democratic shields in here? I would like for y'all to speak on this. What do we owe Kamala? Any Democratic shields in here? Please talk to us. We don't owe Kamala nothing. And you know what I hate when they try to blacken her up and give her black cred and credentials? They always show these little doctored pictures of her in Selma. Yeah. They'll show little doctored pictures, little Photoshop pictures of her walking in front of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Listen, if Kamala Harris was alive during the 60s, she would have locked everybody up who was on Edmund Pettus Bridge. She would have locked all the asses up and prosecuted them and thrown them in jail, including John Lewis. She would have been out there with that billy club, bopping his ass in the head with it. Let's stop playing. Kamala Harris ain't no damn civil rights rider. You understand? And they're missing me with the black girl magic and the black woman magic. Yo, don't forget, I put up some tweets because we keep the receipts. I put up tweets earlier that we were tweeting about her a few years ago when she was out here in California. Them black mothers she was locking up because um, of truancy laws. If the kids were missing school or whatever, she was going to lock up the parents. So she was locking up black mothers doing that. She was locking up black women doing that if their kids could make it to school. Now, there were some situations where there were kids who were sickly, 
like kids who had sickle cell and certain things like that. And people just, you know, the kids are sickly. You just can't take them to school sometimes. They have little episodes. So it was little situations like that where they were like, oops, that's truancy. We're going to go after the parents. So she was cock and kick in about that. I mean, where's the black girl magic in that? We don't owe her nothing. Be very clear. All right, we've got a lot of people in here. Let's get Kimla back. Let's, let's try some of these people in here. Let's get um, IGZ Clothing. Um, IGZ? Yo, what's going on, Tariq? How you doing, brother? It's good, good man. You, listen, I saw you a microphone check. I loved it. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to uh, get the DVD. I'm probably going to get the DVD so my my nieces can watch it since they're here with me for now. Yeah. Um, I actually caught Dana with Judge Joe Brown later later uh, tonight. Actually, uh, before they actually close the room, he literally said that he met her parents and they're Indian. Yeah, no, I know the mom is 100%. Yeah. No, the father is, no, the father was born in Jamaica, but he's Indian. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to see what's going on with that dad. His name is Harris, Donald J. Harris. So I'm trying to see what's going on with that. But yeah, that dad, that's why they, they, they've been real sketchy about that dad and his lineage and his background. Yeah, because he don't look like the typical Jamaican. I'd have been all over Jamaica. He don't look like those. Is, I'm in New York, and I see him every day. Yeah, he'll look shit like the Jamaicans <laughs> over there. I'd, 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 have been in, I'd have been to every damn corner of Jamaica. Kingston, um, Ultra Rios, um, uh, Montego Bay, all over. None of them are going to look like him. You understand? No, so, yeah, yeah. No, one, no one looks like him. So um, I'm just saying, like, Judge Joe Brown, he literally gives a whole backstory um that um, I think her mother, somebody is somebody in his family that know that knows that knows them, and he got a chance to actually sit down and speak to her mother and father, and he gave up the backstory how they come from he comes from an Irish background he comes from an Irish background yeah some other nonsense he used to own slaves and but that he's Indian they're both Indian yeah yeah the the descendants. Well, he he didn't own slaves, but the family yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, in the yeah, family did yeah, back yeah. in the eighteen hundreds, something like that. So I've heard that story too. But yeah, the, the, you know him being a quote unquote Jamaican. Yeah, that that's you know because they're Asians over there who are Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? So you know they they've been very vague about that guy's true ethnicity. But yeah, they ain't from our ethnicity our ethnic group they're not from us so when they come over here with all of that sister girl and she's walking around with hot sauce you better put that on some damn tandoori chicken um kimla kimla black yeah how you doing man how, you, how, how are you i'm good brother um, where you where you calling from kimla um but right now i'm in spain right now i'm in spain but i used to live in new york we used to talk a lot back then i'm from nigeria okay um, what, what yeah. you doing in spain uh, just just vacation, and I, and I moved there short term. You know, good weather. You know, good food. Yeah, well, you know, I, don't so, food, I didn't like the food over there. That that food over there in Spain wasn't that good. Um, now, how long you been over there? I mean, so initially I went to grad school here, and I moved back to New York, and I decided to move back with my family. So I've been here for like a year. You know, it's not bad. You know, it's a little bit more peaceful. You know, it's chill. Well, I, try, I try to go. What part, of, what part of Spain are you in? Of, of Valencia, <laughs> Valencia. That is where is Valencia? Uh, is that where is Valencia? It's very close to Madrid. It's like maybe like two hours from Madrid. Okay, okay. Like in central, the central in Spain. Area, exactly, right? the central, the central. How far are you from Toledo? Uh, like about about two hours. To Toledo is pretty nice too. Very Asian, very Asian city. Yeah, I, I've been. Did, did I go to Valencia? I was. We were staying in Madrid. I went to Toledo. I went to Cordoba. I went to Grenada. Yeah, these are really nice places. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what's on your mind, bro? So, so I, I, mean, I, I do agree with you about Kamala. I think I think she's 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 not black. Obviously, she's Indian. But also, I wanted, I wanted to ask for your advice about our sister that got shot. So, what what do you think? You think black people should stop calling nine one one? Would you say just get get a gun, protect yourself, and don't call nine one one? What I mean, what what do you think? Well, this keeps happening, though. No? 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we we should be able to utilize nine one one. We should be able to utilize the services because we pay for it. Exactly. That's the thing. We pay for it, and and the, here's the thing: if there's a burglar in the house, and then we pop them in self defense, and they're like, "Well, how come you didn't call us?" Well, damn it, I didn't want to get popped by you. So what are we gonna do? So this, what we need. This is why it's very important for us to get a damn anti black hate crime bill. That's why this is important, so that we can fall back on that bill if we have to protect ourselves. Because this whole thing, people run around, these politicians talking about how this America is not racist. No, it is racist. It's dominated by white supremacy. And that's a problem. And these white supremacists are usually some people working in law enforcement. Then they have a green light to office. So, yes, we are dealing with white supremacy. We don't need people going out here lying and lying to the, the, the international public. We need uh, a hate crime bill specifically for us. So the minute you harm us, that, that hate crime bill, we can fall back on that legally. Yeah? In case we have to defend ourselves. See? That's why they're funny style about giving it to us, because they understand once it's in place, we can enforce it. We ain't got to wait on 911. We can enforce that. Yeah. Because that will justify and verify that there is a threat to us. So anytime we start talking about protective justice for us, notice how the conversation always gets Di- diverted into well, what about black on black crime? If you're gonna get a hate crime, is that on? Is that gonna include black on black crime too? They start talking that nonsense. Yeah, no, no, just stop letting people redirect the focus. We got to get a um, a crime bill for us. That's going to protect us. That's why I ain't voting for a damn thing until we get something concrete for us. And speaking of that, for the Democratic Shields. They're they're sending their minions. And I told y'all, right around election season, um, the Democrats, well, they're going to send their minions out and they're going to start throwing my name in the mix. They do this every election season. Um, Remember, they had Tiffany Cross on TV mentioning me by name. Hey, y'all, y'all stop listening to people like Tariq Nasheed. Don't listen to him. They got this other moist, buck-broken Democratic shield, this journalist named Ernest Owens. He's a super sassy Sambo who's married to some dude. And um, he's one of the Democratic shills. They get one of these loud, sassy Sambos to do a lot of shilling for them. And they had him put up a tweet. His tweet says, mainstream media, before y'all begin these interviews with black men and voting for Kamala Harris, a brief list of individuals who don't speak for or represent black male voters. Number one, Charlemagne the God. Number two, Ban Jones. Number three, Tariq Nasheed. Number four, Judge Joe Brown. Number five, Sean King. Then it says, also third party voters who don't like any candidate, um, unregistered voters in the barbershop, random rapper paid for by Trump, random black male podcasters. So they had their super sassy Sambo throw my name in the mix. They always got people out here talking about don't listen to me. Don't, don't listen to Tariq. Oh, Lord, don't listen to him. Listen to us Democratic shills. Lie to you. So who are you going to listen to? Who, who's going to make more sense? Let's let's be real. Who's going to make more sense? Some sassy Sambo who's getting butter biscuits thrown to him by the Democrats or somebody who don't give a damn about neither political party. And I'm only thinking about the best interests and the tangible interests of people within the foundation of black American community. And I've always stood on that. Who are you going to listen to? There's a reason why these Democrats, remember, they tried to put together a reparations um, rally right next to ours, you see, with millions of dollars backing them. They put together a reparations rally the same day as ours with millions of dollars backing them. And many political candidates backing them, the Democratic Party, 
and only a dozen or so people showed up. And hours right across the street, we got thousands of people with none of that democratic money or anything, all grassroots. So they take note of that. Oh, they take major note of that. They see those numbers. They're like, uh-oh. They, they see we ain't playing out here. The grassroots are not playing. This is what I'm saying. We got to understand the power we have as the grassroots. We got a lot of power. And when we get on code, See, they, they're not using, we're not doing the gender thing. We're not playing that gender game because that's how they try to divide us too. You see, when we had the rally for reparations, we had male, women, we had some LGBT people, well, people who are LGBT speaking. We had just everybody. So we couldn't, there's no divisiveness. Everybody put their blackness first. We were black first. You understand? We were all on code based on our blackness. And that's the thing they don't want to show. They don't want to see that. They don't. They can't play the whole where y'all were being divisive against this group. No, no, no. We were very inclusive. We had everybody up there representing blackness, particularly foundational black Americans and what we need and what we need to get tangibly. Right, let's get some more people in here. Let's get S. Sherry in here. Then we'll get Kanye S. Sherry. Hey, Dad. Hey, Come hey, Tariq, how's it going, brother? What's, I'm good. What's what's going on, brother? I don't know. I'm just you know just tuning in, listening. You know, you know, talking a good talk, man. I just wanted to just uh chime in for a quick second. Um, at that time when Kamala Harris was actually um district attorney out here in California, because I'm from Oakland. Yeah. She was in, uh she was a district attorney for San Francisco back in 2004, so all the way to 2011. And at that time, um, Governor Gavin Newsom was actually the mayor of San Francisco around that time. So uh, there was um, there was a lot of people being um, prosecuted. She they said she oversaw over 1,900 cases, and like out of those 1,900, 45 people was convicted. Mind you, um, it was a few people that I know of in the community. I don't you know want to put the information out there but they was convicted wrongfully actually by her over uh some weed cases and one of them actually took took a uh, took her back to court and sued i believe the city of san francisco and uh, i believe they went after the da as well when she when she was uh working at that time and won the case too um oh, oh yeah oh yeah yeah man she has a reputation man she was locking brothers and sisters up left and right out here in california man that's very well known and and let's be real as since she's been in washington in the white house or connected to the white house what and let's be let's be for real what has kamala harris done to help black people let's just stop playing what has that woman done to help black people Okay, let's not even give her that. What has she done to just speak up for black people? Nothing. Every time she speaks about black people, it has to be in the context of helping everybody. Well, uh, we got the Affordable Health Care Home Act and you know, the the fair the Housing Act, where everybody who buys a home is going to get a, a ten thousand dollar credit, and uh, you know that's going to help black people too. And uh, and we we lowered the price on insulin. And, uh, you know, a lot of black people be having diabetes and uh, that type of no, no, well, no, that woman ain't done nothing for us. It's always some old catch all lift all boat bullshit where black folks get insulin. We need insulin, too. No, no that's not helping us. Like, I'm a I'm a throw some confetti and some of the it, it'll land on you so don't say we didn't forget about you some of the confetti landed on you too come on now we didn't forget about you no 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 we're not rocking with kamala harris kanye what's up man what's going on with you Tariq? Uh, i just want to say shout out to you yeah thank you sir i appreciate it what's on your mind uh congratulations on microphone check i uh, mean i think people should definitely study your all your documentaries you told us about the situation way back in Hidden Colors with the benign neglect. Now they've managed to push it forward by getting a bill written up that they never going to pass. 
this George Floyd Policing Act is just another example of benign neglect evolved into this century. Look, the lady said in her statement confirms what we already know. Well, what did we already know? You never spoke on police brutality against black people. Yeah. She never done it a day in her life. Yeah. So this shit is just, it's just sad. It's the same little trick back. So I just wanted to point that out, man. Thanks for having me. Have a My nice man. day. Bro. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Let's get um, Vivek. Let's get Vivek in here. Vivek, hop in, man. All right. Now, people, raise your hand only if you're ready. If you're ready to get in. All right, Vivek, unmute your microphone and speak, man. Unmute your microphone and speak. You got three seconds to unmute, unmute your microphone and go ahead and speak. Um, no, what's your name? No, Mookum? Wait, no, no. What's your name? What is your yeah, name? Yeah, it's Mookum X. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they got Vivek on here for some reason. Oh, I don't know who the heck. Oh, no, that's my old one. I changed that like days ago. Okay, um, yeah, okay. But what's what's going on, bro? I got a question about, about Plies, D.L. Hughley, Roland Martin. Like, do these guys get paid for this? I don't know. Now, Plies, he's really stomping hard for him. I don't know where Plies is coming from. DL, I like DL. DL is, you know, I met DL. DL's, he, he's a cool guy. I disagree with a lot of stuff politically. But DL is a, generally, he's a solid guy. Now, Roland is a complete hack, Democratic shill. Roland and the Bakari sellers and these guys, they've been trying to get jobs. That's how so, Bakari crying on, on Oh, yeah, he, yeah, even but Bakari was <laughs> that crying. Was ridiculous. Well, these are the finest Negroes ever seen in my damn <laughs> life. And every time Roland was about to cry, he was up in Papa Do's with a batch of biscuits, <laughs> about to cry. Van Jones crying. Van Jones cries every week. That was ridiculous. He's talking oh about Joe. Oh, my Jones. God, man. That was insane. So, okay. yeah, it's that, it's, thank you, brother. But it's, a, it's like that plantation thing. They get these Negroes out here crying for Massa. Oh, Lord, Joe Biden. Oh, oh Lord, Massa Joe. Oh, don't leave me, Massa Joe. Takes me, Massa Joe. Eyes go. Don't you leave us, Massa Joe. Is that. Yo, yo. Steven from Django ass dudes, man. That's not a good look at all. Yeah. All these Negroes crying. If y'all don't stop, man, we got to support Kamala. Because Master Joe is, oh, he down bad. Master Joe down bad. So we got to do it for, for Master Joe. Master Joe want us to support Kamala. Damn all of them. Let's get Blake Magic in here. Blake Magic. What's up, Blake? What's up, man? How are you, Blake? Black society. Right. Okay. Probably, you know, she's been like vice president and she really like kind of pleasing someone by doing all that, you know like pleasing the white supremacists but now she's coming for president and she's going to have a, a a bigger say so don't you think it would be wise for black people to vote her in this time no why why can't she do something now yeah because what she's coming as the president, not the, the vice president. As the vice president, Kamala Harris was loud and proud about doing something for the Asian community. She was up here bragging about passing the hate crime bill to protect Asians. She did that as vice president. What what stopped yeah. her doing that for us? Yeah, but why supremacy see um black people as a threat more than the way they see the Asians? Uh-huh. So We'll yeah, get, so probably we'll get the white supremacists to vote for your ass. Don't don't come over here to us. Go holler at them. You see how that works? Since you no, the, the yeah, white yeah that's what I'm right. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to say like she's following orders by them, being a vice let president. Let them vote your ass in. Let them vote you in. Don't come to us. If the if you're jumping and dancing to the tune of the white supremacists, then let them vote you in and get out of our damn face.
Don't come around to black churches and you doing the Dougie and you putting hot sauce on greens and all of that. I'm just making you your tandoori chicken and going about your business. All right. Thank you. I don't want to hear that. That's that old shit we dealt with with Barack Obama. We know we, we got to give him time now. You know, this chest, not checkers now. Ooh, we got, you know, Barack ain't, he going to do something a little later. He got to chill now. You got to understand the strategy. He got to strategize. Stop. He strategized his skinny, moist ass out of the White House without doing a damn thing. He ain't said nothing in the White House and ain't said nothing outside the White House. Ain't it? I'm cool. I want to hear all of that. Let's vote him in and hope for the best. Let's get Yasmin. Let's get Yasmin. I, I, I kind of feel this is a Democratic shield. Yasmin, are you a Democratic shield? No, I'm not a Democratic shield. I am right leaning. I do not agree with anything that the Democrats say. It's not for LGBTQ. But okay. I will be voting for I will be voting for the great Kamala Harris, the first strong independent black woman as president. And you know why I call her the great? Because I don't agree with her politics. It's because she mass incarcerated you niggas. She got you niggas locked up, black men, and didn't get demonized for it. She will always be the great Kamala Harris. Right, and and speaking of black men, she buck broke you as a black man. Look I'm a trans woman, boo. Uh, Don't make me call big Umo on you, Tyreek. Well, well, did you, you see Dr. Um, Umo live stream? No, I didn't see all that. But yeah, yeah you got was, buck, but, but but you got buck broken, brother. I mean, damn. Dr. So how, Umo how, Johnson said he was going. But you got you got buck broken, my my guy. How does that work? How he said Tyreek about- Nashik. Hold, hold, hold on. Well, no, no, no. Because you, you're trying to gossip like you're not a woman. You're trying to gossip like a woman. Come on now. Let's, let's man up and let's talk man to man. You, you got buck broken, sir. Oh, you want to? You know, sir. My, my brother. We can How have a civilized that... dialogue, Tyreek. You don't have to. I don't have to do what? Sir, go ahead, brother. You don't have to mute me. I'm not going to over talk to you. But I heard about you in Atlanta. You talk about butt broken. They call you Tyreek Winalicious because you was sucking dick in Atlanta. (laughs) Tyreek Winalicious. Tyreek Winalicious. Lord, boy, y'all, y'all queens be really fantasizing, sir. Um, T.S. Giselle, is this one of your people? Sir, y'all be wanting everybody to be moist with you. Sir, stop fantasizing. Let's just be real. Um, So why you always... Let's all slow down. Slow down, sir. How does it feel being bug broken by the establishment, sir? How come you know, they you couldn't fight like a man, so you had to choose to be a woman? How does that feel, sir? You huh? hmm? Come on, Yasmin. <laughs> Yasmin. Stop uh, meeting me. Let me get one sentence out. Hold on, Yasmin, because you, you got on this damn Lion King wig. Come on, man. Yasmin. They they, they you're, you're down bad, brother. Come on. I don't, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah, even. Yeah, that nigga is hanging your head, nigga. You shouldn't be talking. Come on, man. You you got tumbleweed fur on your head, brother. Come on, my dude. You sound like a faggy talking about. <laughs> you got tumbleweed. You got a Sally's Beauty Supply, uh, a, a 1999 Say My Name Beyonce wig. That's why you can't walk down the street. <laughs> Come on, Yasmin. What's your, what's your government name? And Leroy or some shit. You look country. <laughs> a big old buff country nigga with a Celine Dion wig on. Come on, brother. That's why you niggas get shot. You're, you're not, no, no, no. You're not fooling me. Stop beating me, bitch. Hey, did you say that's why niggas get shot? Well, somebody need to shoot your wig off. You get off. shot in your back, bitch, while you walk down. Well, well somebody, they can't shoot you because that wig is bulletproof. <laughs> All right. So you're going to be safe. Yep. You dig? <laughs> Um, the person who shot Trump, they were aiming for your wig. All right, they thought Trump's hair was your wig. So that's oh, Tyreek. You can take right. bullets, but you can't take a joke, bitch. Calm down. I don't know. Calm down, yes, but calm down. <laughs> calm down. What are you? They were aiming for your pussy because it's real wide. It's real wide, and it has a bullseye. So that's what they were aiming for, sir. And <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> Anyway, Yasmin, th- thank you so much, my brother. All right. <laughs> oh, goodness. He's, he's been 
poor fella's been buck broken. Let's get our brother Afro Elite in the building. Uh, brother Afro, what's up, sir? I'm good. How are you, man? This whole thing with Kamala Harris, I think that all of this sudden black support that they're claiming that she's garnering, having 44,000 black women on a Zoom call, I think all of that is fake. I don't believe any of that whatsoever. Me either. I think Kamala, like, yeah. Kamala did not have nearly this much black support. She didn't have any black support at all when she ran the first time. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, she has thousands of black women donating and millions of people throwing millions of dollars at her left and right and all these endorsements that doesn't make any sense she's not any more likable to black people than she was four years ago when she ran when oh, yeah. she ran four years ago she was trying to be this uh black girl and on this black girl magic and was completely ignored now all of a sudden she has tons of black support and she's an icon in the black community i don't believe it i don't believe that at all Exactly. And and again, my thing is when she loses in November, they're going to blame black men. They're already setting it up. They're already getting the talking points out there that um, black men are hating. It's really a bunch of black women who's really supporting her. But most black men, except the boule, are hating on her. Yeah. So they're going to start blaming us when she loses. And I ain't got a problem with it, to be honest. I do not have a problem with it. All right. Let's get Ben Ben in here. Ben Ben in the building. Let's get some of these new faces. Hey, well, hey, what's up? The great Tyreek. Man, what's I'm up? proud of you. you My man. Ben. My hey, what's up? Yeah, what, yeah, what's you it with, Ben? Huh? What city are you in, brother? I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida, man. Shout out to Miami, man. What's on your mind, Ben? Hey, hey, you know what? Uh, but Kamala Harris did spend her money to come down and campaign for Gillum, who was running for governor in Florida several times. So, yeah. you know, so she has to be given credit on that. She did uh, work the Democratic machine, and they moved her up to vice president. However, uh, she is not um, a descendant of American chattel slavery. Right. I do, I do believe she can claim to be black, but she's not a descendant of American chattel slavery. Right. But yeah, I'm not were we giving her credit for just going down there campaigning for another Democrat. I, I don't see how that's going to incentivize us to go out and support her. So um, in Gillum. Uh, we know his story. We know Gillen's get down. Don't let him get into a hotel room with some white boys. There's going to be strange stains on the sheets. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's not a that's not a plus. <laughs> that's not a selling point. We know what his get down is. Let's get um BJ eight five LA. Hey, what's going on with you, man? How you doing, brother Tariq? I'm good, my friend. What city you in, bro? I'm in South Los Angeles. I'm a grassroots organizer for an organization in South LA. Cool. And, so what's uh, the organization? I'm with the organization called Scope, Strategic Concept and Organizing Policy Education. It was started by a brother by the name of Anthony Thigpen, and uh, he created the California Black Power Network, as well as the... Uh, Million Voters Project. Okay. Are you guys clicked in with the Can you repeat that question? Yeah, I was saying, are you guys clicked in with the Democrats? Um, so we are C3, so we really don't support any uh, Democrat. We really focus on policy and educating, uh, you know, the black community about policy that's going to hurt or harm the community or what's uh, in our best interest. And so, you know, we uh, we preach the message that uh, if we don't have a seat at the table, then we always gonna be what's on the menu. And so we try to, you know, policy. inform. What, what are the policies you guys are promoting? Cause that'll let you know who's funding some of this stuff. What, so, what policies are you funding? So right now, one of the main policies we're focusing on is phasing out oil drilling in, um, in South LA. So it's not necessarily a policy. So. That's one of the actions that we, we uh, really focus on, um, oil drilling, and then we uh, focus on um, 
teaching folks about the uh, the new twenty five uh, bill that, that that's coming up. Oh, uh, well, that twenty twenty five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That y'all if y'all funded by the uh, yeah, so. Yeah. So we have private funders, and then most of our uh, well, most of our members uh, account for you know um, their their uh, part, their share or part of paying for the organization. Also, how what's your guys' stance on immigration? So the stance on immigration, being that you know we we focus in South LA, so we are a black and brown organization, uh, and so. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, so I knew it. I knew that. Uh, who, <laughs> who's Hispanic? Who's are are the Hispanic people running the organization? Uh, no. So we act, we have members th that's black and brown because of the demographics of LA. Uh, my job specifically is to recruit black members to be a part of the organization which was started by a black man in South LA after the 1992 uprisings. Yeah. Now, is he still a part of it? Is he still around? So he moved to uh, to organize throughout the state. So we focused mainly on issues throughout South LA where we, we talk about uh, climate. We focus with the, uh, we work with the, uh, the South LA Ecolab building the Slauson Corridor and getting, um, grants to fix up the city and create more green spaces in South LA and try to tackle the issues around um, creating more healthier options than uh, like where we stay at is mainly like a food desert. So we're trying to get, you know, more farmers markets throughout South LA. Now, how many LBG people are on your board over on there with the work? Um, I'm not, you know what, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, um, sure exactly how many is on the board but i know it's a couple for sure right la is funny like that man you they don't you don't get no funding unless you have some lgbt people um the brown thing you gotta have some immigrants that's the only way an organization with black folks get any funding in la or california um it's real funny style um and, and much respect, you know, you know, I'm not knocking you, you know, I, I hope you're successful at what you do, but uh, I want people to know, and this is why family, we're going to have to have a, a big fundraiser for the Hidden History Museum, because black, just straight up, when you just want to be black, black, you ain't mixing nothing with nobody else, you, the, the funding dries up, there's no funding for that. Um, we're telling you from experience, 100% Black-owned entities in California, well, they are starved out from the grants because there's a gazillion dollars earmarked for diversity, minority, people of color, all of that stuff. We're supposed to get all of that. We don't get a dime. Literally nothing, 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 nothing. We don't receive anything. And we serve the community more than um, most of these people. And we get uh, the most notoriety. We have our events popping the most. We've done so much for the community and don't get one dime in grant money because we don't have all of that the um, DEI stuff. Because DEI means Latino, immigrant, LGBT. That's what DEI really means. All of these other groups who ain't black. So we don't really have all that. We just, you know, keep it black. Um, our brothers and sisters over at um, Redstone Firearms, that's another black owned business. They're being run out of their place. They got a, they're getting evicted from there. They had a very successful gun shop, one of the most successful ones in the West Coast. They played the paperwork game with them and got them out the paint. And from what I understand, they got vandalized the other day, if I'm not mistaken. Do, um, is Nicety girl in here? I know Nicety is out here. Is Nicety you in here, beloved? Is it true they got vandalized? I, I need to holler at Jonathan. I think I heard they got vandalized, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I don't want to speak on just hearsay, but I, from what I heard, they got vandalized the other day in the process of them being basically evicted from their spot. So 
we go through a lot as black businesses out here. So when the guy told me about all this grant money and all of that, I said, oh, they must have LGBT people on the thing because we're applying for grants. They, they were asking us that. They were, we we're getting questionnaires and they were asking, um, what's the sexual orientation of such and such? And do you identify as non-binary? And, and these were mandatory questions. I'm like, what the hell? So it, it's funny style out here, man. All right, let's get zero, uh, zero cold tolerance. And then we'll get Harriet Tubman's pistol after that. I see Harriet Tubman's pistol raising the hand, but zero cold. All right, zero cold tolerance. Hey, hey Tariq. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, I just want to first say, I was. Yeah, I just want to first say thank you for advocating for reparations. That's like the main reason why I said like, you know, support you and follow you and all that. Um, nobody really else is doing it. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Destiny, now where are you from? You sound like a white gentleman. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. I'm from Washington State. I'm just like born and raised here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now you, I just have one question. Are, are you a black man? Are you an immigrant? I'm, um, I'm half black, half native. Okay. Like Indian, like Vivek Indian? <laughs> no, no, no. A native. native like a oh. indigenous. Okay. What tribe? Um, like Coastal Salish. Okay. You, you're half black and half white. That means you're, you're somebody. Is it your dad who's supposed to My be mom. Your mom. Okay. So your mom is probably a $5 Indian white woman. What part, <laughs> um, what part, of, Europe, what part of Europe is her family from? I'm um, sorry? What part of Europe? <clears throat> what part of Europe is your mom's family from? Part of her family? I, I don't know. She's native. I don't know. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I just have. I just have one question. Thank you. Go for ahead. Stage. Um, do you believe the the Republican Party is the path to reparations? Um, I don't know. Any one of them can do it. Yeah. Any one of them can do it. So, um. I, it's not a party issue. It's an issue that we got to push. Because um, if you ask somebody in the 1960s, would Lyndon B. Johnson be the path to civil rights? Everybody would have said no, because he was a, a hardcore anti-black racist who openly used the N-word. Yeah. But the streets put that pressure on everybody. So he was the one who actually passed the civil rights bill. So um, I don't put anything on any particular party. It's all about the circumstances and how much we're going to campaign and pressure people to put policies in place that benefits us. So that's what it's about. But go ahead. Um, yeah, that, that was my only question. Um, there you it. go. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Harriet Tubman's pistol in the building. Peace, power, and reparations. How you doing, Tariq? I'm good, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing very good. I, I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate everything you uh doing and I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about one thing. I wanted to get your thoughts on one thing. Um yes. I wanted to talk about how Kamala Harris is that aka Ida Howard and how the divine nine is being used as political capital against our people and how they're gonna vote in mass for the most part. Can't speak for all of them to vote for Kamala Harris just off the basis that she's black, but not advocate for specific policies and political change for our communities and how they're putting their fraternity, their allegiance to their fraternities and their sororities before the forward progress of our people. Yeah. And a good, good observation. Here's the thing. See, the problem is that's not going to galvanize the grassroots because what happens is, a lot of these fraternities, and some of them are cool, I'm not knocking your fraternities, but a lot of times, um, many of them, not all, but many of them come across as somewhat elitist. Like, okay, we are in this fraternity and we're not a part of you guys. We're different from you guys. So we got our own thing over here and you know, we're the talented 10th. Some of them are on that. So the general grassroots are you know, from a political standpoint, I kind of turned off from that. That's why Roland and those guys, they can't really galvanize the grassroots. Roland is all about the boule and his fraternity and Greek this, Greek that. And that doesn't translate in the streets. That's why when Roland and those guys show up, 
people run them off the damn block. Have y'all seen videos of Roland getting ran off the block? Then and rolled his little chunky ass right off the block. Like, man, get on up out of here. We ain't rocking with you. See, the real problem they have is people like me and others who do get a lot of grassroots support. You understand? Roland and, and let's be real. Roland and some of those fraternities, they can't. And no, I'm not knocking fraternities. I'm not knocking you. I, the Q Dog, shout out to the Qs. Shout out to all these guys. Shout out AKAs. I used to date the AKA women back in the day in my younger days. I love the AK women back in the AKA women back in the day. Um, but the thing is, they can't really galvanize the grassroots like that. They, not really. Not really. Can't really galvanize the grassroots. Like, People like me and others who I don't have no allegiance to, no boule and no Greek organization and none of that stuff. It's all about the people. I'm all concerned about the community as a whole. And we've done work for the community that's been undenied. So we can galvanize large numbers of people from a grassroots perspective because we've already done a lot. That's what they, they fear. That's why they always got to have the boule class try to demonize and delegitimize us, the people who are real influencers. I wish my dog shut up, man. Lulu, shut your big ass up. But um, Lulu, my wife had to wash Lulu's ass because she went outside and attacked another damn skunk and got sprayed. <laughs> A big ass running around here smelling like a skunk. The whole backyard stank. So what what did you bathe her with, dear? Um, it's a concoction of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. Some hydrogen peroxide baking soda? Dish soap. And dish soap, okay. It, it kind of... Regular dog wash. Oh, okay. Skunk dog wash. You use the skunk stuff? He held in there. Oh, Yeah. So now she's sleeping good because she got a good ass bath. <laughs> she's snoring because she can breathe better with that skunk scent off of her. Uh, well, yeah, my my animals, they do the most. They're always in the backyard killing something, killing a lizard, skunk. They're attacking a skunk, and I had to. They attack one skunk, and the skunk played dead. <laughs> then I had to go lift it up and take the shit in the front yard and. Yeah, I was about to spray me. I'm like, oh my God, it's a wild damn kingdom over here, man. Yeah, that skunk tooted his ass up at me. One time a skunk got in our garage. Oh, yeah. Remember that? How did we, did we, how we get her out? I just left it open and it was busy. Cause it was in there for a few damn days. No, it was what? Just one night. Really? Cause you left the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I left it open and in the morning it was not there. Yeah, we, I was scared. yeah, we had a skunk in the damn garage chilling. And every time I walk up on it, it tooted that ass up at me. I said, oh, man, I'm not about to get sprayed. What would you put on a human? Because you Yeah. Then I got to take a dog bath. All right. Let's, um, who we got? Let's get Nigel. Nigel. Let's get Nigel in the building. Brother Nigel. All right. And then we'll get um, Brother Jonathan Whitfield. And we'll get Nigel, and we'll get Brother Jonathan Whitfield. Hey, what up, Tariq? How you doing, bro? Oh, Brother Nigel, I'm good. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. Um, What's on? It, it, it's just mind-boggling. It's, it's like... I, 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 it's some of our people like to get finessed two times um, because after everything we've gone through in these last three years, and for them to come back to the same conclusion... Vote Lou no matter who. I think somebody said something earlier. I think the Democrats put a root on our people <laughs> because I I can't explain how you can fall for the same tricks twice. I know, man. We we got this loyalty thing. And all they got to do is come down to the church and bring a couple of catfish nuggets, and then we all they they come down hugging and kissing. You know, and, and, and a lot of black folks, especially older, that's their reparations. Getting a nice hug from white women, white men. That's why we did the Bucci Bear skit and they had the um, Stacey Abrams character saying that she's going to give reparations hugs for everybody. 
That's what niggas, Negro, hey, niggas, we want a hug, man. Let's be real. Let's get Brother Jonathan in here. It was good, Tariq. What's how, how you doing? I'm good, Brother Jonathan. What's on your mind? You down there in Atlanta? No, I'm in Atlanta, man. And it's, and, it's, and it's crazy with the vote blue no matter who thing that's going on. You know, um, I just one brief comment. What I don't like about it, like I said, I'm a, uh, most fellows know I'm a minister in the church and um, I speak a lot on reparations in my sermons and stuff like that. Um, but besides that, one, one gripe I have about this Kamala Harris thing is that um, you probably spoke about it earlier. I've only been on about 15 minutes. Is they say how they raise all these millions of dollars and everybody kind of rallying behind that. My yeah. main gripe, yes, sir. My, my main gripe with that is they, they so quick to raise money for somebody who's not going to do nothing for them, who don't claim them. And we have all these issues in our community that, that we can donate to. And I just, that, I found that very troubling. Could they quick to donate? Just millions of dollars for something, and somebody who just don't basically don't like them like that, don't claim them like that, right. and we got all these issues that we can put this money toward, and it shows you how when we want to do something we can do it, but it, we we get the wool pulled up our eyes. Not just I, it just it bothers me, you know, what I'm saying with the whole fraternity thing, it just it gets on my nerves. But that's all I want to really want to say, man. I appreciate everything you do. And by the way, where's your church out there in Atlanta? So I, I speak at uh, at Shallow Shallow Church in the West End. Oh, cool, cool. cool. We're ready to buy more house. Oh, my man, my man, I appreciate it. We got to go down to the church when we come down to Atlanta, man. Yes, sir, look me up. Absolutely. Shout out to Brother Jonathan. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's get Cheryl Dawson. Cheryl Dawson in the building. What's up, Cheryl D? This, okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. And hello to everybody. And thank you, dear brother, for letting me speak because uh, I heard mention of, you know, older black folks. That's me. Reverend, yes. that's me. Well, and I will tell you all how I feel. Now, how old are you, oh, by the way? So, you know, how I work you? in the field. I work in the prisons oh. with my sisters. Hold on, uh, I retired and went back. Oh, she um, is. I built the first program in-house for them to try oh. to help them. Under you know, you know, the old black folks that'll be listening too good, they get to talking like my mom. Hold on, slow down, Miss Cheryl. Like yeah, my mom be just talking, don't be listening. Um, Cheryl, how, how old are you, beloved? Before you get into all that, how old are you, dear? She's probably still talking, don't understand. They got muted. Cheryl, she's still talking, family. She, she doesn't, she didn't unmute her mic, Sister Cheryl. Cheryl, beloved, she's probably telling her life story. Well, I, I grew up in Selma, then I went to Chicago in the 50s after I graduated. You know, she's, she's telling her whole life story and not understanding that she's probably still muted. Cheryl, dear. Cheryl. Okay. Poor thing. Oh, God. I, I, I just wanted her to let us know how old she was. And she's... I, I, I know she's talking her ass off, and I, I want her to get back on because I don't want her to lose her energy. I would like to hear what she has to say. Cheryl, dear. Cheryl, Cheryl. Can y'all wave at her to let her know she's in there boiling some beans on a crock pot for in the morning, and she's she, <laughs> she's tenderizing some meat. <laughs> And she's not paying attention. Cheryl, 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 Sister Cheryl. God, she's talking. I will right, we'll, we'll let Sister Cheryl get back on in a minute when she's done talking. Let's get um Rania Hartman. Rania Hartman. Rania? Uh Raina. Raina, there you go. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Raina? I'm doing well. How are you doing this evening? Well, what city are you in? You're from Idaho. I'm so happy that uh, I followed my intuition and my, my faith and just kept on with what I was doing because I would have been too upset with myself if I had left a place where I, my cup was being filled to go see some nonsense. And as far as when we are going to learn as a people, I do not know, but I'm facing so much pressure. Tonight, I started getting the the pictures of the people uh, that 
that went to the conference and it says, I'm with her, Kamala Harris, blah, blah, blah. I saw Joy Reid say any black person oh. that wasn't supporting Kamala Harris, something was wrong with them, and they were going to be on the side all by themselves because she was making history. And I was just so puzzled because Darryl. all you have to do is, you know, go online and find Darryl. her uh, talking at APAC. Are talking Darryl. about how much the Jewish people need weapons and money and how Ms. she's committed Darryl. to keep, continue serving them forever. But I don't hear her talking about us as Breathe, black people. Darryl. As a matter of Breathe. fact, there's a clip that shows her when she's talking and they're asking her about reparations. And she says, oh, oh, I'm not about to do nothing just for black people. I'm not going to, I, I, I wouldn't Ms. even... I wouldn't think of that. I wouldn't think of that. Now, okay. So Ms. I'm saying Darryl. to my sisters, I'm just trying to be quiet, but every once in a while I have to say something. It's like, but don't you see who she is? Don't you? I worked across the street when she was in San Francisco. I worked for the women. She worked Darryl. against them. And she had no problem locking us up all day, eight hours a day, five days a week i have sat in that court i have seen us come in in shackles i see that judge who's usually white and sometimes not give out all that time like it's worth nothing to nobody and she was a part of that and we tried to talk to her about it you know because sometimes uh prosecutors will hear uh what you have to say, and they'll try to do something to get a sentence, but they'll also do something to help the person. If they can't help that person, they'll get involved with some program on my side of the street and do something to help the women that are incarcerated, but not this one. She would tell the people, oh yeah, come on to the office, and they get to the office, and her secretary or her receptionist would never let them in. She never broke her stride, so no. No, I'm just going to be in that river. I'm just going to be wet. And uh, as long as God keeps me standing, I'm just going to stand my ground because I can't do anything else. I'm out laying my plane. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cheryl. You were doing it. Yeah. Ms. Cheryl, how old are you, by the way, dear? Ms. Cheryl, how old are you, dear? Ms. Cheryl, Ms. Cheryl. Oh, I can't hear you all. Lord. Miss Cheryl, how old are you, dear? How old are you? Oh, Lord. Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl. He's having trouble with the phone. Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay. I know I knew she was talking all this time. He's been she has not stopped talking. She just stopped. Miss Cheryl. Cheryl. He's struggling with his phone. Lord. Uh, okay, man, I'm trying to get to know some. I just, all I want to know is how old Miss Cheryl is. That's all I want to know. Miss right, Cheryl, can you, can you hear me, dear? Bless her heart. All right, let me get Miss Cheryl out of here. I was trying to, okay. All right, Raina, let's try Raina. Yes. There we go. How you doing, Raina? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, Raina, what, what city are you in, dear? I'm in Northern California, so oh. up, up in uh, Roseville. There you go. So what's on your mind tonight? No, I just wanted to understand fully, like, the perspective of um, this group and identify also what happens to be the alternative of the policy. Like, what is it that, like, Miss Harris is not someone that is ideal, Right. I wouldn't choose her. But between her and Trump, what is the alternative? The couch. Mm -hmm. You know, you sit your ass down. That's an alternative, too. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to vote for neither one of them because they're not offering us anything. Mm -hmm. um, who did you vote for last election, by the way? I voted for Biden the last election. OK. And as you saw, that didn't really work out for you, did it? I mean, it did help me get my own business. Like how? Mm -hmm. But as far as how, wait, wait, how so? How did that? What? What did? How did that help you get your business, dear? Um, I guess the way that 
the government worked in my favor this year. I was able to get my private practice. Um, so getting the funding to do that. From what program? Um, I'm a licensed marriage family therapist. Okay, no, no, no. But what you got the funding from what program that's connected with Biden? I'm trying to understand that. Um, a grant that I got from the state of California. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Huh. Now, did you get it, the grant? Now, what's your background? What's your lineage? So my father's um, grandfather um, was a slave. And my mother's parents are from Europe. Okay. Okay. So In yeah, yeah. Okay. So your mother's white and your dad is black, right? Correct. Okay. And, and Blackfoot. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So your, who's Blackfoot? Your dad? Yes. Okay. So did you get the, the grant uh, using the Native American ancestry? Nope. No birth certificate. So, so who do you, you don't have a birth certificate? Um, not for uh, the the grandmother or the great grandmother that was Blackfoot. No. Okay, oh, she doesn't have a birth certificate. Okay. No. Okay. And let me see. And you're not? Are you? You're not LGBT, are you? Nope. Oh, okay. Because usually they prioritize that. Oh well, no. So what's your practice though? So what do you do? What's your, what's your practice? You do psychology. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Uh, now how does that work? Up? How are you working that out up there? How's that working out for you up there? There's a lot of people that need some mental health services, so it's working. That's true. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So um, this next election, mm -hmm. if you were forced to vote for somebody, who would you support? I think I'm going to support probably, this is, I'm going to support Democrats. This is why. Um, I really want more change in the mental health system. Um, I would like to get more involved in policy changes because what's going on right now and in our prison system and our mental health system is a problem. I'm not really too worried about who I'm putting in office for the president. I'm worried about who I'm putting in office for like the governor or um, the Congress members. And making yeah. sure that the voice, the, I'm, I'm hoping that the louder um, people with understanding of these problems speak, that it resonates to these people that are actually the, the policy makers. Okay. And the ones that vote for what actually changes things. Okay. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rain. I appreciate you, dear. Thank, thank you. Appreciate you and everyone here. All right. Let's get okay. We got a uh, how many people we got in here? I'm trying to let a lot of new people speak tonight. Let's um. Let me see. Let's get a halal. Let's get halal in here. Let's get Mr. Halal in the building. All right, halal. Hop on, sir. And then we'll get said. Let's get halal, then said, and then we get um I right, halal, hop on. All right, halal, hop on. You got three seconds, man. One. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> what, what's going on, Halal? Good, good. Uh kind of was busy, but uh how are you, Tariq? I'm good. I don't know. What were you busy doing? Uh, homework. I'm in university. Oh. What city are you in, by the way? Uh, <clears throat> currently, I am in Kansas City, Missouri. There you go. All right, so what's on your mind tonight, Hello. Yeah, so I don't know why Black Americans shouldn't vote for Kamala. Uh, I think you guys, she's, she's on your side. That's my How so? opinion. How so? Well, uh, she's she's basically done, you know, politically a lot for you guys. So I think like FB, what? Like, like what? Uh, as was said previously, 
a lot of FBAs are uh, suffering from diabetes due to the highest rates of uh, obesity. So she was able to get you guys insulin. If you don't stop. If you don't get the hell out of here, brother. Come on now. Okay, my bad. There you go. Stop playing. Um, now, you're going to vote for Kamala because she's, so, you know, that she's going to have more of your cousins come over here. So that's why you're going to support. Let's keep it a buck, right? What do you think I am? I haven't told you if I'm an immigrant or not. Dude, I hear your accent. You ain't got to tell me nothing. I hear your accent. You know, we, we y'all, y'all not, we, we hear you and see you. Y'all know y'all not really fooling us, right? Now, but you, uh, foundationally buck broken Americans are something oh. else. No, 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 no. We, we hear your accent. Oh, no. Buck broken is what you were at. Your, uh, great, great crap. No, no, no. We know that you had to do some funny for some honey. To get that green card, yeah, we know what you had to do. You had to move that little musty thong to the side and, and do some favors. We know what you had to do. All right, let's get said in here. Said, Tariq, what's up, said? What's up, bro? How you doing, my friend? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good. Now, what city are you in, said? I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta. So what's on your mind, Sam? I wanted to ask you how you feel about uh these black rich coons trying to get poor black people to vote against their own best interests so they can get tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Is that why they're doing it? I don't know why they're doing it. Some people are getting... Yeah, Charlemagne, Charlemagne explained like why rich black people like voting for Trump. Mm -hmm. He said he get tax cuts. And that's what Charlemagne said? Yeah, him and Andrew Schultz. I'm brilliant idiots. They explained the whole game. Well, man, I don't know how accurate that is. People, you can get tax cuts with Democrats. You're going to get your tax cuts whenever. So The, that, the, that, the Democrats testing on the rich like 60% right now. But, no, a lot of rich people or wealthy people, they own businesses, and your businesses don't get taxed the same. So I, I, I don't – that's just kind of a – Little so how you feel about tax cuts? Um, yeah, that's what I'm explaining to you. That's kind of irrelevant if you own a business because you know the but, tax. But the tax cuts, they all uh, hurt poor people. The government assistance and stuff. So does it? Is this? Are the tax cuts hurting you as a poor person, sir? I mean, majority of black people poor, so I'm for my people, ain't you? I'm talking to you. I'm saying you as a poor. Yeah, talking, yeah. yeah, if you don't make 400K, it's going it's to hurt you. Right. Um, now, who are you voting for? The Democrats. Okay. Why are you voting for the Democrats? Because you poll and you need it. Yeah, they're for poor people. The Democrats well, are for poor people. Yeah. The Republicans are for rich people. Well, how come a bunch of trailer park hillbillies who ain't got you said it? You together? explained it last week. You, you you told them they were stupid for voting for Trump because Trump don't care about them. Right. You got a bunch of trailer park hillbillies who ain't got two nickels to rub together voting for Trump. So they're not right. Rich. But you said you said they stupid last week. You told that dude he's stupid for voting for Trump because he's poor and Trump don't care about but, poor but, white but, people. But yeah, you you kind of jumping all over the topic and the subject. The point is that. It ain't about rich because you got poor people who support Trump. But, yeah. but I'm saying, didn't you tell the white dude that he was stupid because Trump using him? Does that have to do with what I'm saying now? You're not really making the correlation right, sir. Because you saying, how do it matter if poor white people voting for him? But you said the dude was stupid last week who voting for him because Trump using him. Right. And that proved that's, my that's point. Okay. That, that, but that just debunks your point. You're, you're debunking your own point. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you no, really... What, Self. What I'm trying to tell you is it's rich black people trying to use poor black people the same way you said Trump trying to use poor white people. No, it's not. Because a lot of rich black people support the damn Democrats. I know they for their people. It's the it's the uh, people that it's the rich black people that don't care about black people that that's uh voting for Trump and trying to get black people to vote for Trump. But you have poor black people who are trying to get folks to vote for Trump too, not just rich. Well, you know 
and you know they stupid. Yeah, there's poor black people. So who's all the mm -hmm. rich black people supporting Trump? Who's the rich black people? Any black person you see saying don't vote for Kamala or vote for Trump, nine times out of ten, that person is in a tax bracket where he gonna get tax cuts. That's a dumbass talking point that the DNC then passed down to y'all. Do you do you get tax cuts? Yeah, yeah. What you're trying to do, you you you're not because you're kind of mush mouth and you think that you're being clever. But do you get tax cuts from, from do you get public? Speech, nigga, do you get speech therapy? You're very mush mouth and you're not very bright. You're just saying shit. This is say. Why shit. you want to answer the question? Yeah, because you're just saying shit. You don't know what you're talking about. You just mush mouth Negro babbling, sir. You're just saying shit. You don't even know what you're Why talking about. Why you want to answer the question, bro? Do you but, get tax cuts from Trump? Yeah, because, because your question is dumb. You don't know finances. I'm not a... Stan finances. The answer the question, no, dude. Is it some tax cuts? Where's all that? Where you get all that cash? That's what that's about. Where's all that money coming from? Well, according to my calculations, uh, the people who get a 40% tax cut is more than likely to vote for Trump because he has residual income tax breaks that's going to affect a certain bracket of the people. He just shut up, nigga. You don't know finances, sir. You're just mush mouth babbling. You don't know what you're talking about. Is you going to answer the question? <laughs> you ask the dumbest shit that don't make no sense. Well, it, it must be a bear. It must be relevant because you ain't answering the question. How much of a tax bracket is you going to get from the Trump administration. Shut up, nigga. Just shut up and sit down. Just shut up and sit down, nigga. And just be real. You're voting for the Democrats because they had catfish nuggets. Just say that. The Democrats is for our peoples. No, they ain't. That's your, that's your Democratic voter right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is the average Democratic voter. Dumb, mush mouth, plebiscite babbling buffoons. That's your Democratic voter right there. Don't know what the hell they're talking about. Lord, I'm, I was trying to give the guy some leeway, but there's only so much plebiscite, mush mouth babble I can take, family. I don't want to hear all that. Well, hold on there. Well, hold on now. It's rich. Yeah, yo, you got big money now. You just got big money. Is you going is you gonna vote for Trump to get you some tax breaks? Shut up, nigga. Just shut up. <laughs> Johnny. Oh, okay. I didn't know this is Johnny Somali. Oh Lord, I didn't. Johnny, go ahead. I didn't know. How this. you doing, sir? You good out good oh, afternoon. Lord. Good I didn't know it was you. You had a different profile picture. Well, what's going on, man? I'm doing great. I just want to talk about um, the black community. And I want to know why the voting rate of the black community for Kamala and Joe Biden last election was around 80 to 90 percent, like 95 percent of the black community voted for Kamala and Biden. So do you think it's my question to you? Do you think it's going to change this election? Um, yeah, because I think the last election was a finesse. I don't know anybody who was really supporting them like that. And I think Kamala is going to get washed in November. There's not going to be a big galvanizing a level of support from the black community for her. Who are you voting for, by the way, Johnny? Um, I'm voting for Donald Trump. I'm voting for Donald Trump. I'm a very right. uh, stark supporter of Donald Trump. Um, I'm actually connected with Candace Owens family. So I've been, I've been in that camp for a little bit. I've been to the White House. I love Trump. I, even, though he, even though he called Somalia a shithole country, he's right. Yeah. Right. We got to get our shit well. together. There you go. There you go. Well, you you know, you let them talk about your own homeland and you feel the same way about it. So that's on you. All right. Let's get um, Giselle. Uh oh, let's get Giselle is in here. Giselle, hop on. Let's get it out the way. 
Uh, Giselle must be in the middle of a date right now. All right. All right. Let's get, um, hold on. Uh, let's see who else we got. Let's get, we've got a lot of folks down in here. Let's get, I only argue with equals. I only argue with equals. We got almost 1,200 people here in the middle of the night, by the way. Hello? What's up, brother? How are you? What's good, brother? How you doing? I'm good. What's on your mind, sir? Oh, uh, man, it's my first time speaking. Um, uh, I just really wanted to kind of come on and make sure I, I tell this story about uh, when I went to South Africa. Uh, by the way, I'm from uh, I'm from here in the States. My family, you know, FBA and everything. But Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, so I worked with the, a program. It's called I Earn. And they basically bring people from all over the globe, like uh, young people, teenagers, and all that. So in 2003. Oh, let's slow that down. Let's slow that down. down. So I earned it. That left like a little nonprofit organization. It's not not really a nonprofit organization. I believe that they they, uh, work with like different organizations around the globe to bring like high schoolers together for like a, it's like a leadership program that they choose to be in, right? So. When we went from the states as the representatives, it was only like ten of us, right? Yeah. Like the main proponents to be against us, like in every meeting, like talking about how lazy black people are and all that stuff was all African people though. Like mm, so wow. when they get on here and lie every day, it's kinda disrespectful, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's crazy to hear these people talk. Like they've been trying to build with us all this time and Especially around that time, uh, uh, most black people would be what you would call a pan Africanist right now. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but just to see it at first hand, man, it was crazy. We got into a fight and all type of stuff. But that's just you know just watering the bridge. That's one thing. But y'all got y'all got in a fight with the African cats? Yeah, actually, we did, man. We did, but not the black Africans because we actually got into it with some white Africans that was. I mean, they, you know, they they basically run the whole place. The regular African people that live there, they lived in the shanty towns. Like it yep. basically was like a old rusty bus stop from back in the day, with a whole bunch of them in a row in the middle of the town, and then all the white people lived on like the hills. Like yeah, it was crazy. But we was on a college campus, like, but it was like right next to it. Though. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing that that trips me out of, about South Africa, man. The black folks over there in the shanty towns, and y'all the majority, and all these other whites are living in luxury. I'm like, man, boy, this was us. Yeah, we, somebody's gonna give up something. I'm leaving out of here with some. Let's get JP. Hey, Tariq. Uh... You know, I was looking at your profile, and uh, like you, I'm from L.A. I don't know if you're born and raised in L.A., but I am. I'm a third-generation Angelino, so I'm a little bit older. And um, how, do you, how old are you, by the way? I'm, I'm already 60. Okay, how about you? you? Um, yeah, you I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm old, too. I'm old. No, too. you're yeah. kidding. Now, where's really? your family from originally? Well, my grandparents came over from the old country. They were Japanese. And then okay. uh, on my dad's side, they came from Korea. So okay. I'm third generation on both sides, but I'm, you know, I was raised in East LA, which I don't know if you know, I don't know if you're from LA, but, but I've, uh, I've been out here since the eighties. So, okay. All right. So uh, you've been here a while, like 40 years. I have. Yeah. So now, now during the 92 riots, what, okay. was your, what was going on with you and your family? Oh boy. That's a whole other Pandora's box, bro. Let me tell you, because uh, I got a lot to say about 92. You know, I I would imagine most folks here uh, are probably not old enough to remember that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I go back as far as the Watts riots in 65. uh, And I was just a little kid then. You were a kid. You had to be like two. I I was a kid. Yeah. But, you know, it was all over TV. And, you know, I'm looking at this and going, hey, Ma, you know, uh, this is happening in LA. She goes, Oh yeah, that's, you know, uh, cause we were in East LA, which is all Brown. Okay. So all my girlfriends were Brown, you know, Mexican, you know, Chicanas and all my homeboys were, you know, Mexican. 
So, yeah. you know, I, I had a sense of what it was like to not live uh, the privileged life, like on the west side of LA, right? Which, which is where I'm at now, you know, ironically. But my to, to, to your question, when I was looking at the Watts rights, I'm like, you know, uh, this is happening in LA. She goes, oh yeah, well, you know, LA's big. And uh, this is maybe about, you know, 12, 15 miles from us. And I'm like, wow. This is crazy, you know, that uh, black folks are this pissed off. Well, I didn't say pissed off, but, you know, this mad and angry that they're doing this. And she goes, well, they got a lot to be mad about. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, okay. So, you know, uh, when it came to 92 and when, when, you know, when the King video went down and you, know, you remember all that crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm looking at this going down and I'm thinking to myself, you know, as an older person, uh, this is just um, the chickens coming home to roost. Like Malcolm Now let's said. go back. Let's go back for a minute. Now your family, sure. when did they come here from Japan? They came at the turn of the century. My grandparents came from the old country. So, you know, the early now, 1900s. Yeah. Okay. So during the 1940s, did mm. any of your people get interned in those camps? During my mom, ma my mom was in the biggest camp. She was in uh, uh, Poston, Arizona. That was the biggest of the, all the camps. Wow. So yeah, wow. as were you know, of course, my grandparents and all my aunts and uncles. I have a huge family on the uh, on on my Japanese side. Which yeah. also, you know, uh, and I'm not saying this to try and get brownie points here. It's just a matter of fact. I have black relatives, too. My Auntie Frances married um, my Uncle Joe, uh, who was originally, I want to say, from either Arkansas or Louisiana. But uh, they, they, uh, the Wileys, they, they migrated up to Chicago, and then they met at the University of Chicago. And I got another huge uh, faction on that side of the family because the Wileys had, like, eight kids. So I got like eight black relatives, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. So you know. Now, 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 let's go back. Your mother. How long was she in that Arizona camp? How long was she there? Well, I think that you know she was just a little kid. I think she was maybe eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there. So they were there probably oof, I don't know, three, four years. I want to say something okay. like that. Yeah. And then some of my uncles, uh, like my uncle George, who's the oldest of the eight. Uh, kids, there was really nine, but one died in, uh, in infancy. Uh, my my uncle George, who's the oldest, he actually to escape the camps. Well, I say escape, but to avoid the camps, he moved inland, and he migrated to Iowa. So my oh. ma actually, when she got a little bit older, like in about middle school, she actually went back and lived with him for a while, as did my other uh, my other aunt. Uh, Monty Rosie, yeah. and I remember when the war was over, and they were getting ready to come back because uh, my grandfather he was a farmer. Okay, so he wanted to come back to California to farm, and uh, they were expecting my uncle George to come along, and he says, "I am never going back to California because of what they did to us." Right, and right. yeah, so you know it's pretty heavy, man. It's pretty, now it's not so in eighty nine. Uh, did, you, did your family get those checks, those reparations checks? Yeah, absolutely. From Reagan, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. I remember, I remember asking you talking about it with my mom. I said, you know, well, why are they giving the Japanese checks when they should be giving, you know, uh, 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 black folks, uh, Native Americans, and uh, Mexicans? Because you know, this used to be in Mexico. She goes, no, I don't know, Mexico I don't know. Sold huh? Mexico sold it, but go ahead. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, story. yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, it, it just seemed weird to me. And I, you know, again, I was fairly young at that time. So, you know, I was naive and didn't know a lot about history, but, uh, and them checks came, you were like, Hey, Hey, you know, um, well, I wasn't, you know, but all my aunts and uncles got them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now, yeah. now are you married now? You, you married now? No, not, not anymore. No, no, no you were married. I was, yeah. Were well, you married to a black woman or a white woman? Well, uh, let me put it to you this way. When I was married, it was to another Asian woman. She was a Vietnamese immigrant. But okay. my longest relationship has actually been with a black woman for 15 years. And we broke up maybe about five years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, where so, is she from? Where is she from? 
Who? The the black girl you were dating. She's from LA. She was from okay. Carson. Yeah, she's from oh. Carson. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that fifteen years. That's a long time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Y'all didn't have kids. Nah, man. We were older when we met up. She was like, and Deborah was like, maybe I don't know, thirty seven, thirty eight, somewhere around. They're still fine as shit, you know. When yeah. I when we met, mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, we were past that. She had already had a grown son. My daughter was probably it was probably about twelve, thirteen, somewhere around there. So, you know, we were already on, you know, we would, you know, we, we didn't want to get married. We were cynical. We'd both been through divorces and all that crap. So, you know, there you go. My yeah. man, all right, well, information, Jay, man, very interesting story there, brother. Thank you so much, Jay. Interesting. Interesting story. All right. Shout out to Jay, the Japanese Korean guy. Interesting. All right. All right. Giselle, what's, what's happening? You keep requesting to get up Giselle go ahead and say what you gotta say are you somewhere with an Hermes bag and you always bragging about Hermes and all that Giselle hop on <laughs> first black sorority and the prettiest as you can see <laughs> what, what, sorority, what sorority are you in <laughs> um first of all Tariq I'm about to wear you out I don't know if you see my response Number one, I did not appreciate you removing me from the space. You didn't just remove me from speaker. The last space I spoke, you removed me from the space. I so did, I, I didn't, didn't. I didn't try to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Because we're not going to act like I'm not that girl in the Tariq spaces. Everyone <laughs> joins the spaces for the comedy hour with Tariq and Giselle. Now. <laughs> I got four words for this audience, and then I'm go, going to be it. Go ahead. Who raised you niggas? Well, you <laughs> have lost your mind. The democracy is at stake, and y'all want to continue with this bullshit every day, wasting time. This election is serious. This is a serious matter. Now, what's so serious about it? Why is it so serious? And you want to continue to waste time. Tariq, if you're going to vote for Trump, just say it. I am tired uh -huh. of you hiding and bickering behind the bush like you're not a Trump uh -huh. supporter. Okay. If you're a MAGA, put on your MAGA hat because you beat around the bush. You've been beating around the bush for this entire election season. Uh -huh. Now, if you're a Trump voter, just say it. Now, speaking of Trump, I, I heard that you were at that rally, too. And after the bullet grazed his ear, it grazed one of your balls. This is what I heard on the street. Well, you heard. Well, you heard wrong. You hold on. Let me hold on. Let me stand up because I'm laid in the bed because I do have to go to work in the morning. Let me tell you something. First off, I was not even in this country. Okay. I was in Europe. Okay, vacationing for several weeks. <laughs> when those incidents took place, like you said, you said it right. Got a lot of style, got a lot of Hermes on me. Okay, All these right. girls can't even spell Hermes, honey. A, a African Frenchman from Cotova or Ivory <laughs> Coast in English dropped 14,000 euros on the Champs Elysees in Paris. And you girls want to get in here and talk about a big bag, honey? You could never. <laughs> Honey, your man won't even oh, take you to a, a $9.99 buffet. Hold on, wait. EJ, we got to get EJ in here. Brother EJ, what's happening? Brother what's EJ. up, brother Tariq? How you, how you doing, Tariq? I'm good, man. What's up, EJ? I'm doing good, man. I'm just over here throwing up, you know, Tia Giselle room smell like the insides of Andrew Gillis, Andrew Gillum's pussy hole. So, you know, when, every time <laughs> he come up here, that babbling just be all over the place. You know, when you have customers like T.S. Giselle, they start running out the room like Bobby Valentino with such shame because, you know, T.S. Giselle be running around with a frying pan trying to hit niggas for um, rent money. So, you know, when she's going here talking to all this five star class shit, you just got to you just got to get like some um, you just got to get like some pliers so you can just close her mouth and shit because we know she do something funny for a rent. little bit of money, you know. Rent, honey, I live in the marvelous chateau. OK. My flight to Europe costs thousands of dollars to and from. I didn't know you could pay for flights okay. with loose change from your job at the strip club. I didn't know we could do that. Um, <laughs> as I've said before, um, 
any type of donation we prefer, but we prefer the type that folds and not the type that jingles. I don't know what type of women you interact with, honey, but I am T.S. Giselle, and don't you ever forget it, mush mouth. Yes, yes sir, you are the T.S. Transformers, <laughs> robots in disguise, sir. <laughs> all right y'all all right all right that's enough Thank and what so- i do know is that you could never afford to fly any woman out of any country you don't even have a passport nigga because well, you probably owe back that's, that's enough that's enough oh god y'all be doing the most man y'all, y'all doing the most my dog is snoring it's just too much going on right now Oh, goodness. Okay. Anyway, let me get up out of here, man. I'll be on here all night. Go look. Go to microphonecheck.com. Go to rootworkstyle.com to get that rootwork deodorant. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Contribute to the Hidden History Museum and also get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. Phenomenal children's book. Your children are going to love it. Hidden History 